welcome to Dice Friends. This show and everything we do is brought to you by you and the support of our Patreon, uh, which is patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun. I'm Jacob Burgess, and welcome to Series 2 of Not a Drop to Drink, A Tale of Vancouver Island by Night, Loading Ready Runs, Vampire 5th Edition Chronicle. This is Session Zero, and I am beside myself excited to once again share a table with some very wonderful people who I get to help shepherd even deeper into the night. And I will, in turn, allow them to introduce themselves, starting with Heather. Of course you would. My name's Heather Deary. <laughs> yeah, I see that evil laugh. Uh, I'm the uh, YouTube content manager for Loading Ready Run. Uh, I stream, I do whatever. I wear a lot of hats, because mm. it's fun to wear a lot of hats. Just stack them. Yeah, stack of hats. Yeah, like... Like but the, but the never crown. never the fedora. No. 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 Uh, sadly, fedoras are dead to me. I think they're dead to all of us. Hmm. Well, who would you like to go next? I want Adam to go next. Knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Adam. Uh, I am an on-screen talent for Loading Ready Run. Uh, have been for about six years now, I think, or something like that. Wow. Um, and I will be playing Oliver Tyndall. He's back. And he's going to be just as confused as ever. Fantastic. Yeah, can't wait. <laughs> Who are you playing, Heather? Just out of curiosity. Uh, the best brat on the planet, Jessica Chadwick. <laughs> That's a real good title. That's awesome. Yeah, best brat. Best it was, brat? Uh, it was in her uh, high school yearbook. Voted best brat. Mm. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They wrote it in special just for her. Yeah, it was Ooh. not a category that existed before. <laughs> uh, you want to make that canon? Sure, why not? Uh, it is now. Fantastic. Uh, who would you like to go next, Adam? Corey. Mm. Well, well, well. <laughs> Hi, I'm Corey Ander Dickinson. I'm a content creator for Loading Ready Run, and I am playing Jordan Hinkleman, everyone's mom. <laughs> Everyone's mom. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, it's very Evangelion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cor, who would you like to go next? Uh, Cameron. Hey. Of course. Uh, I'm Cameron Lauder, and I am a actor, writer, performer for Loading Ready Run. Uh, and I am playing Silas Reed. The he, Silas is just a very good boy. He doesn't know how to be anything other than a very good boy. Uh, mm. He's a, a blood sorcerer, though. And what a very good boy means is mm. kind of up in the air when you're a blood-sucking monster. It's true. That's very true. Mm. But he listens to his elders. I mean... Because he has good. to. I, I, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Very good boy just depends on which side of the crime you're on, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, it's been, oh boy, uh, what did we, what, a year and a half almost since we've sat down at a table together? A year and a couple of months? Year, year and three months. Yeah. yeah, about a year and three months. Yeah. Uh, it is incredible to be able to share the same space with all of you again, uh, now that we are, you know, fully vaccinated it feels weird it does doesn't it yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah like but good like good weird yeah like it's good yeah. it's just different like uh, we spent the last two years of our lives like hiding from each hiding other hiding from yeah. each other in a closet yeah. you know yeah yeah it's like the uh the airport scene in castaway where he's like in the the employee lounge and somebody's left a, a, a like a costco tray of luncheon meats yeah and he's looking at it like he doesn't know what it is yeah. after he's being rescued. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly yeah. the thing. Yeah, Cameron, you just put into words exactly how I was feeling. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. I have a facility with language <laughs> and uh, deep empathy for other human beings and yeah. their emotional depth. Yeah. I feel like one of those three things isn't true. <sighs> just depends what side of the crime you're on, Jacob. Uh, that's true. I, I would, you know what? That's a good point. That's I, a really good point. I would never accuse Cameron of being a liar. Huh? No. 
No, no, it's not. It's not. It... Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, think, things things have been weird, uh, and we're just going to acknowledge that. Uh, we're just going to acknowledge that up front. Uh, it's been a year and a half, so what we're doing today is we're doing another Session Zero, um, which, you know, before you start any, like, big stretch of game, um, it's important to recheck in with your players and figure out what's going on and get used to everybody again, especially if you've had a big break in between sessions because you've got to kind of relearn you know where everybody's at and if they even want to you know play the same game so we're going to be taking everything a step at a time we're going to be taking everything slow and reacclimating to each other to the game to the setting and we're bringing you along with us in a session zero uh session zero is pretty much above everything done to create expectations and set expectations for everybody at the table. Uh, I just made a fart sound with my hand. Accidentally, enjoy. So how do we do that? How do we go about kind of getting used to each other again and getting reacclimated? And uh, I mean, before we talk, or, you know, it, talk about anything or get too deep into cracking a book open or whatnot, why don't we see what we remember from last time? What do you remember of the game that we played a year and a half ago? Let's just start with a bit of a, a, re, a re, re, recap of dabbles. We got attacked by werewolves. Mm -hmm. And then we hit him with a van. Uh, yeah. Van okay. fight with werewolves. Yep. Yeah, okay. van fight. And we, don't, we never really found out why we got attacked by werewolves, right? Mm. It is a mystery. Is. <laughs> <laughs> we may have instigated. Yeah mysteriously werewolves attacked us it was yeah. not our fault it wasn't our fault mm -hmm. uh, and then we me and Je jessica are like newer vampires okay and we were given under the care of jordan and yes i don't think silas silas is just with us right yeah we I've... weren't given any like specific orders S silas right? doesn't have to do the homework we seem to have to do yeah, yeah no we do have that one dude who is very hot who was our link to? I can't remember his name. Quinn. 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 That's what his name is. Quinn yeah. Jackson. Yeah. yeah. The sheriff. Quinn yeah. was a Ventru with a fancy coat with like the Ventru thing. Yeah, that's all on I remember it. is his suit was very yeah. nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even his lint is made in Italy. He <laughs> he was particularly mad at you for yeah. going and doing non vampire things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I kept calling him on my cell phone or something. I kept calling him. <laughs> Right, we're not allowed to have cell phones, right? It yeah. depends. Depends. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I well, mean, if you don't tell, I won't. Oh, okay. Well, Oliver doesn't even really know how to work technology anyway, so it's not the best with it. No. Um. What else? We ended up meeting with some anarchs. We went Chains. to their we, we went to their party. Yeah. Yep. I remember we an anarch to, party. We were trying to make good relations, I guess, with other. Well, Silas was trying to make good relations. We had to. Because we were with Silas, yeah. I believe. I resent that. Mm -hmm. No, I was absolutely not trying to make good relations with the Anarchs because they're lawless Anarchs. Yeah. But you had to see them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they have real estate holdings and I'm here to build a tiny chantry. <laughs> mm. Rent a tiny lease, basically. Uh. I don't know if you'd gotten into specifics. No, yeah. no, I'm, I'm, yep. I'm looking in, I'm looking into acquiring real estate on behalf of um, an organization I represent. Mm, mm, mm. And what is that organization? <laughs> that would be Clan Tremere. Ah, ah, House and Clan Tremere. House and yes. Clan Tremere, House right. And... Yes, because, yes. you know, we're not actually vampires, we're wizards. Why not both? Like yeah, Harry Potter? Both? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I love Harry Potter. <laughs> Uh, first Harry Potter joke of the game. Mm -hmm. It will most likely not be the last, mm -hmm. I would assume. Oliver loves Harry Potter. <laughs> Seems like Oliver would love something like Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. We also met a couple of other Anarchs. Rat. Yes. With two T's. With who's, two T's. Oh. Who's yep. a Nosferatu. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and seems to have an, look, he looks like an ambulatory pile of rags. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. 
And then Monica Giovanni was there as well. Yeah. A, a representative of Clan Giovanni. Probably. Probably. Mm -hmm. I mean, I actually didn't, I actually didn't ask her her last name. It seemed rude. Um, I sold her some stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure she mentioned her last name was Giovanni and mm. I went, mm. oh, mm. okay. She would have mentioned her last name yeah. was Giovanni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a name that carries weight if you know yeah. about it. But we know she and Chains were in denied him because Chains told us that Quinn was his ex. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Quinn Jackson was his ex. It's juicy. Yeah, so the Anarchs and the uh, and the Camarilla, do they like each other? Not really. No. No, I don't think so. Camarilla is like the the main body of the vampire culture, right? Kind of. That's, it's a secret society. They, they're yeah. trying they to be say. the government. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's let's take it back to brass tacks, mm -hmm. uh, because I think I think some pointed questions might help us uh, kind of spark a little bit of uh, 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 knowledge and memory. Um, and hopefully, uh, we can all look back on that uh, on that time fondly, and uh, and and be very excited about the future and 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 where it's going uh, for our coterie. So let's start with um, let's start with your characters, and then we'll move on to general setting of uh, Vancouver Island. Mm -hmm. So what do you remember about who you are playing? Well, Silas is a warlock. He uh, has been sent here to establish a Tremere presence in mm -hmm. the newly um, unlocked, <laughs> newly available mm -hmm. Vancouver Island, which had previously been kind of terra incognita for vampires. Mm -hmm. Until about two years ago. It is yes. Dude went missing. Yeah. It's yeah, currently the, 2017. The... the Vampire Prince of Vancouver went missing. <laughs> yes, indeed. Do you remember his name? That's as uh, we can say unironically out loud, do like. Oh, is yeah, it? Vampire it Prince. starts with an L. He's very famous. He's like. Lashrak. <laughs> Leopold? No. He... Uh, Siegfried. Siegfried, uh -huh. right? Yeah. It was like a crusader name, basically. Yeah. He's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, uh, Mask is in charge right now. Yeah, his son yeah. Shawl. Um and. Vancouver Island had previously been a place where uh, one could go very briefly mm -hmm. and not come back from for largely unknown reasons. Mm -hmm. And after Siegfried's disappearance, uh, that stopped being the case, and it's not really understood why. That's, yes, mm -hmm. all of that is very correct. Uh, and, you know, as it is a... Metropolitan area, not necessarily a very large one, but there's lots of people here, so House and Clan Tremere has an interest in establishing a presence. Mm. Especially considering that the Camarilla, Camarilla is uh, establishing a presence here. You can say Camarilla. Camarilla? Oh, okay. yeah, cam oh. yeah, yeah, you yeah, can I say can't, Camarilla. I can't put the English on it. No, no. no. And yeah. I love that you tried, and uh, you did it, it and it Thank sounded you. awesome. But you can say it however you like. Okay. People are going to Camarilla. Know it. Cam uh, yeah. <laughs> that Camarilla. The Camarilla is, uh, you know, growing here. It's a small presence. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, probably pretty honestly a little surprised to see this many Anarchs just partying in a junkyard. Yeah. With humans. Mm-hmm. Being, letting it all hang out. Yeah. This is going to work great. Mm. Especially considering that the human governments have been handing out Darwin Awards for just this kind of thing for the last few years. Hmm. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the name of the organization handing out those awards? Uh, that would be uh, uh, Project First Light? The Second Inquisition. Second Inquisition. Yeah, right. Second Inquisition. Project right. First Light is a subsect kind of right, code name yes. for we we call it the second second position. position yeah yes yep yeah kindred definitely do now tell me a little bit more uh um since you uh volunteered speaking of first uh and tell folks just to kind of remind people and yourself and everybody at this table uh what silas reed is all about silas was raised by his maternal grandmother to be a good boy and mm -hmm. what that means is that he is loyal he is thoughtful he considers what he does as part of like a longer continuity. Mm -hmm. uh, he was 
trained in university to be an architect, and he did so from a background of ecology and considering the landscape and building appropriately for whatever place it is that you are trying to live in, um, instead of just stamping down identical brutalist architecture on whatever landscape it is. You know, you want to use local materials. You want to consider daylight and water and try to make your presence in the world as inobtrusive as possible. Mm. And that is not terribly compatible with being a vampire, unless it maybe it could be. Um, Silas's main interest is in building for eternity. And that used to mean the idea that your the subsequent generations that come after you have to kind of deal with the mess of whatever you've done. Mm -hmm. But more recently, that's meant I'm going to be around when the sun goes out. We have to get out of here. <laughs> Tick tock. Mm -hmm. um, so building for eternity doesn't necessarily mean making things that last for eternity. It means considering what you do in the context of deep time hmm. and what your waste means and what the fallout of your actions means. And that would paralyze a mortal, right? If you had to think about everything you do. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. oh God, if I throw this out, it's going to be around for millions of years. And I'm an immortal now, which hmm. means I get to watch it decay which is a very different perspective and he's still young enough to try to be wrapping his mind around that and uh one of the things he's realizing is that this is not a very common thing for a lot of vampires to think about because they're thinking about things like god i hate her oh everyone here is just so much worthless more worthless than me why aren't i in charge and it's like, yeah, you're, you're coming to kill us all. It sounds like Silas is a uh, an individual uh, burdened with deep thought and glorious purpose. Uh, yeah, maybe. Oh, if things things work out. You know, he's just trying to make it day to day, basically. Uh, also, one of the things that really hooked me on uh, Clan Tremere is the fact that they are no longer bound. They no longer have the blood bound blood bond mm -hmm. to their sire. Yeah, something bad happened. Something bad happened and that all got broken. But I figured that would leave like a psychological void, mm. right? Because that that would still have a presence in your in your blood, right? Mm -hmm. In your you culture. Would, yeah, you would feel the sudden absence of that bond. Uh, you absolutely would. How long has Silas been embraced? How long has he been? Sub a decade. Okay. Maybe only a few years. His sire is not an elder, um, but certainly, you know, someone of importance in his uh, in in his immediate area. Do you remember his sire's name? Theo. Correct. Um, and Silas has been put on detached service. He is certainly trusted mm -hmm. to do things, at least. He is. As much as you can trust somebody that you decide to, like, send on an independent task. Mm -hmm. um, so apparently he's doing something right. He got to make you. Yeah. Or he's doing something very wrong. Quite. And this yeah. is a punishment. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I could, I, if I screw this up, I mean, it, it'll go up the chain. It Consequences will. Consequences go up the chain. Hmm. Important things to consider. Mm hmm. Hmm. Well. More things to consider. Yes, yes. So uh, who would you like to uh, uh, talk about the character next? Uh, I think I would like to hear Corey tell us about Jordan. All right. Jordan Hinkleman uh, is from the island. He's from Victoria, uh, or Souk, which is, you know, Victoria. Um, uh, grew up in a house that her dad built. Got married reasonably young, just out of high school. Had a couple of twins, had a daughter. Uh, the twins were lost in an accident, and her marriage basically kind of slowly fell apart after that. And 
uh, she left and got involved in the Camarilla in Vancouver and then I think was potentially sent it as like a gopher in rural Alberta for for the cam doing kind of odd things to like you know prove herself mm -hmm. and uh, she mostly wants to uh, never lose anyone important again so she wants to turn her daughter who's where uh, she'd be in Edmonton I was thinking maybe she's at like U of A U of A or mm -hmm. Nate yeah. 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 I, b I believe uh, my notes say U of A. Would you yeah. like to change that? Yeah. U of no? A is fine. U of A? Yeah. All right. One of the very few people at the University of Alberta not from Alberta. Their dorms don't seem very packed, at least from what I understand. Most of the people in Alberta go to the U of A, and it's uh, not a lot of people from outside of Alberta go. Huge immigrant population. Mm. At the school. Mm. All right. Oh, I actually didn't know that. Oh, cool. Awesome. Well, today I learned. Today you learned. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to say about your character or the character's recollection? Uh, I would say she inherited her parents' house and came back to the island when it became open as kind mm. of a way for the Camarilla to like kind of start to establish mm. a foothold. Um. And then, yeah, she got a list of tasks to do and is working on those. <laughs> All right. <We're laughs> yeah, for, working. For, for knives. Mm. My uh, sire, who's an archon. He is an archon. Which I don't know what that means. So an archon is a uh, one of the very few vampires that kind of uh, travel and problem solve. So in the Perfect. Camarilla, you have the inner circle and then you have just a cars which are like in control of various regions. Um, and then you have uh, those that work for the Justicars, the Archons, and you are the child of an Archon. Mm -hmm. So you have a bit of status and a bit of clout uh, within the Camarilla, um, or at least within the Camarilla of Vancouver Island locally. Yeah. Uh, you are a known quantity, um, kind of seen as an up-and-comer almost uh, within the society, uh, especially being um, one of the very few native to the island folks that are here because you returned when you went to Vancouver. That is correct. Yes. Yep. Uh, remind at a, uh, what kind of a music show? Uh, I said that Knives was a singer for a Procol Harum cover band, there which you go. is really funny to me just as like, they have to include the whole orchestra. <laughs> you just, you can't do a show without the whole orchestra. Uh, why would you? Why would you? Why would you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it was just kind of a, a, Rather than the entirely punk, rowdy, bruja mm -hmm. crew, uh, I think uh, at least Jordan is more one of the types that wants uh, to foster change from within to make the Camarilla more open and inviting, uh, work together with humans. Okay. That kind of thing. Um, risky. It's risky. But, you know, I... They're, they're people, too. Humans are people. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Humans, humans, humans are, are people. people. Humans are people. Humans. Humans are people. Who would you like to talk about their character next? I would like to hear from Heather. I expected more of a head whip from you when you were going to say that. <laughs> Heather. So, uh, Jessica, I think I placed her around 25 if I'm remembering right, because mm -hmm. I didn't really write that down. Uh, so just to be, I'm sorry for interrupting, just to yes. kind of like to the table, as we're kind of recalling our characters and everything, um, as a general thing, whatever you say here is now true going forward. We're going to try to recall as much as we can uh, from the past. But if there's something that you're like, oh, I remember my character was this. And if that's not jiving with you now, a year and three months later, we're going to change it. We'll write it down in your character sheet. We'll retcon things. We'll talk about how the story may or may not be affected by that. Uh, but don't worry. We will make it fit. Okay? Um, uh, we are all, as a table, going to uh, figure all this out. As we recall everything, we're helping the audience recall what has happened. Obviously, the audience can go back and watch it whenever they want uh, on YouTube.com slash Loading Ready Run. Um, but for us, 
again, it's been a year and three months. So we're all going to be very flexible, understanding. Uh, it's been a panini. Uh, this is one of the <laughs> very first times that we've all been in the same space together in a long time. So we're going to figure it out. And that's what a session zero is for. So now we look to the, we're we looking to the past. And then we will look to the future after. Yeah. Uh, so just to kind of take some of the pressure off. If okay. I could. So I keep doing that. Sure. <laughs> keep doing uh -huh. that. Sure. You, you do it behind the screen, though. So I'm not really convinced oh that's very good i don't i i i'm I i'm holding my hand like this because i'm i'm like oh i can do it if trying I do to it yeah different angle can I next 10 minutes <laughs> yeah it helps it helps if you hook the pinky and oh yeah no oh, are you okay yeah yeah you're all right yeah i'm good yeah well fuck that mic yeah <laughs> it, 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 it jumped out at you yeah. and we got it on camera anybody will say mm -hmm. there you go yeah yeah i'm ready okay. to make the fart yeah there we go good Playing a very serious vampire game. Mm -hmm. Footage of Prime Minister emerges. <laughs> <laughs> Too old to be Prime Minister now. <laughs> I did I miss a reference? No. No. Okay, great. Would you mind? Uh, uh, yes. I think yes. 20, going, going back. Going yeah. back. Yeah, around yeah. twenty-five. Going back twenty-five. Uh, uh, she, I, I picture her as like a, a person who went to college. Uh, for fine arts, couldn't uh, couldn't get into the writing program, but could get into the visual arts program, mm -hmm. and so took writing as a minor, and um, now has like a lot of student debt. Okay, didn't really like still str trying to write stuff, even mm. though, but feeling down about it because mm -hmm. graded poorly mm -hmm. uh, on that. Uh, so now lives with a bunch of roommates. Mm. How many? Uh, mm, if I recall, I think it was two. Two that were definitely named. Yep. Uh, Charl and uh, what was the girl's name? The one that called you Jess Jess? Jess. Yeah. The one that called you Jess Jess, Kathy? Yeah, Kathy. Kathy. Mm. Right, because when I hear the name Kathy, I think of all the pink. Yeah, yeah, with the, juicy, with the yeah, juicy, juicy, with the juicy, with the juicy, juicy couture. Yeah, yeah, yeah she had no. the juicy on yeah. the back of her butt. Yeah, 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 and and loves Boyd loves marijuana. Yes, yep. thank you. Yes, I recall that. Yeah. Yep. Mm, yep. Kathy. I I really picture that they used to get along until uh, at some point, like they kind of clicked, but then. How long uh, have they been rooming together? I think they went to college together. They went to college together? Yeah. So sh so you would have been embraced after that, yes? Yes. Ah. So how do you, do you think that might have been the catalyst that started affecting their relationship? I think it was sort of happening before that, but it, it imploded more mm. because of it. Okay. All right. Now that they have the impression that you're just kind of like a laze about or I, I won't shut get in almost. I won't get up during the day you won't get up during the day uh, yeah. I mean they party all night too but they get up during the day yeah. to at least make their 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 work mm -hmm. and I mean she's got her modeling career yeah yeah and all just, those instas we just don't understand how you're making your money yeah mm -hmm. but I'm still paying rent so yeah it's not none of her business and I believe you had an Etsy store. Yes. If I recall correctly. Yes. And um, do freelance writing, uh, like listicles. listicle writing. Yeah. So I, I, I chose listicles because I like saying the word listicles. It's funny to me personally. Mm, mm. Um, but those are those are generally your Buzzbeed, BuzzFeed top 10 uh, mm -hmm. things. Well, one of the sites you write for is now Buzzbeat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Buzzbeat. It's the uh, Buzzbeat is the uh, the Buzzbeat. the Canadian knockoff. Uh, Buzzfeed. Uh, they generally do listicles of ten. Uh, Buzzbeat does eight. Oh yeah, I I yeah. really like that because yeah. it's less work. Yeah. Yeah. And they 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 pitch it as really distilling down yeah. the essence of the listicle. Yeah. Ten mm. is too many. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh. Oh. Ten. Ugh. Eight no. still gives you variety, still gives you choice, yep. but it's it's less confusing. Yes. Yep. I like the way you think. I like the way you think very much. Who would you like to talk about their character next? Hmm. 
Hey, Adam. Hi. Tell me about Oliver. Uh, Oliver Tyndall is the most clueless vampire you'll ever meet. Uh, he is. He's only been a vampire for like a couple months. Mm. Um, he used to be a substitute uh, industrial arts teacher or just shop teacher for mm-hmm. you Americans or yeah. other countries. Um, but that has currently been taken away from him because, I mean, no schools are open during night, Yep, really. So he, he hasn't been doing much. Mm. Um, he's currently kind of lost on what to do with everything. Uh, he's feeling extremely overwhelmed. Um, and he's just trying to make best of a very weird situation. Mm-hmm. Um, the only bright side to come out of this whole situation is that since he now knows that vampires and werewolves are real, that Bigfoot is real. <laughs> and he's really into Bigfoot. Very much. Mm-hmm. He would like to meet Bigfoot one day. That's his, He's like, now I get to meet him. Or them. You know. Yes. I don't know. Yes, please. <laughs> so uh, he's ended up, I guess he, he kind of got placed into this uh, coterie under the care of Jordan Hinkleman mm. because he's a new vampire yeah, and they regulate everything. Um, and that is where he has ended up. Mm. Uh, he is a kaitif, mm-hmm. which means he doesn't know or he doesn't have a clan, mm-hmm. um, which I guess makes him a bit of a target. You know what I mean? Like as far as like other vampires will look at him, I guess other, I'm assuming that other vampires look at a kaitif and they're like, gross. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and especially since he doesn't know who his sire is mm-hmm. or like how he got turned or anything, mm-hmm. um, it's not going to make things easy for old Oliver. Yeah, yeah, yep. Uh, Kindred usually say embraced. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. embraced. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not correcting you. No, no I am just yeah, letting yeah. you know what the uh, what the actual the, terminology is. Well, the the in world parlance. Yeah. You can if you. People I mean, Oliver would probably still say turn. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, and as idea. well, you should. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not just for your benefit, though, but yeah. also for the benefit of the audience. Basically, yep. like, picture if your dad got turned into a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can see at the bottom of the screen, like, look at these people. Look at these gorgeous, amazing, amazing people. Yeah. All right. Uh, so those are your characters. Uh, does anybody remember any details about each other's characters that maybe weren't mentioned? Like... As far as like our relationships with each other or like... No, well, let's, we can, we'll go, we'll do relationships kind of a little bit next. It was more of a invitation of, uh, is there anything that you remember about Heather's character, for example, that uh, stood out or you may not have, uh, or may not have been mentioned? I don't think so. No? I I mean, mean, I think that was fairly comprehensive. mm -hmm. Yeah. Oliver eats animals. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oliver eats animals. And also, still tries to eat food, like a like a yeah normie. yeah right, right. He tried to eat that beef jerky, and yeah. we were all grossed out by yeah. it. Mm-hmm. He still tries to eat food. So, I believe you actually have the merit. Yeah, I have eat the merit food. eat food that lets so, me eat. Yeah, so you don't try to eat food. No, I can't eat food. You straight up can. You yeah. can't digest it. No. You still have. Doesn't to, it still uh, taste really bad too? Uh, it depends on where your humanity's at. Okay. Uh, truly, but you are a incredibly you're you're very very much in touch with your humanity yes uh so you enjoy uh certain benefits and pleasures that other kindred other vampires uh don't yeah i yeah. have a question about yes. how he can eat food yeah it goes in mm-hmm it ha- does it have to come out uh it does have to come out yes or else it yeah, just sits there there's poop that's a good question. I never thought about that. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No? No, vampires do not poop. Oh. You have to throw it up later. Gross. Yes. <laughs> that's, oh, that's messed uh, up. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I hope the poutine was good, Oliver, because <laughs> you're going to taste no it twice. Acid. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yep. Oh. My heartburn's yeah. gone. But mm. but don't don't look at it as having to vomit. Mm-hmm. It's you get to enjoy your meal twice. Twice? Yeah. yeah, yeah. have to vomit. You get to vomit. vomit. (laughs) (laughs) Keeping a positive attitude in the modern nights, very important. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very important. All right. Well, that's good. Everybody kind of remembers their character and where they're at. And everybody's gotten to take a look at their character sheets and uh, all of your notes and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yes. Just other notes. Mm. Remember, Jordan has a really nice house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jordan does have Mm -hmm. a nice house. We we decorated part of it. Yeah. Yeah. You did. You absolutely did. 
it was the living room. It was the living room. It was, it was, yeah. it was yeah. all, all we had time for was the living room. Yes. Yeah, but uh, and we rewrapped the Christmas improved. presents. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell her no. I mean, yeah. And Oliver's really uh, <laughs> willing to help. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do. I want to call one thing out before we move on to talking about Vancouver Island too. Uh, is that you nerds didn't actually plan to all wear the shirt on the same day. Uh, this just happened. I did not ask for this. I don't want this very, very clear. Uh, this literally just happened. Uh, Adam and Heather and Corey all came in with the shirts on. I had brought mine because uh, I didn't know. Uh, and uh, Cameron was like, did I miss the note where we all yeah, said we were going to wear I, our shirt? I didn't and check I was Slack like, this you morning. You know what? It's just going to look weird and unbalanced if you're not wearing a shirt. So I gave Cameron my shirt uh, and I'm... I'm just wearing my hoodie. Um, that's yours now. You can just keep it. It's oh. for you. It fits you now. It does not fit me now. Oh, okay. Merry yeah, Christmas. I, I, I guess I, I stretched I, it out. No, a little, no, yeah. no, not at all. Not at all. I want to point out, you Cameron, we, we couldn't we couldn't leave you a Slack message because I would be talking about it. Right. Oh, it yeah. It's right on True. the thing. Yeah. It's hard that I have to look down at the shirt every time I think about Bite club and then I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. yeah. It's it's a good reminder. Yeah, can't mention it. Failed again. Mm -hmm. Should have printed them if upside I had, down. If I had other vampire shirts, I might have chosen something different. Oh, yeah. Should have printed them in invisible ink. <gasps> Black light. Yeah. Mm. Honestly, yeah. actually, no, be, no, no, no. If these no. <laughs> glowed in the dark, <laughs> it would be so dope. That would be very yeah. dope. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, careful what you mention on the internet I, that's something i very very i remember very distinctly uh talking i think it was the, in the q a mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. you can't mention anything on the internet because it's like saying ice cream in front of a kid yeah mm. yeah and and beach will uh have all of our heads for for suggesting stuff that's true mm -hmm. uh that's true uh beach uh is another member of loading ready run that handles um uh the merch. merch and and uh things like that and uh none of us want to make uh beach mad um Beach is great. Love you, Beach. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to make Beach mad. So, um, how about Vancouver Island itself? Like the setting uh, in the world's like in the world of darkness. We're gonna set with the character, and then we'll talk about Vancouver Island, and then we'll talk about kind of what you remember about the world of darkness uh, itself. Because mm -hmm. um, essentially, it, this is super loosey goosey. We are a group of friends sitting around a table remembering and talking about a game that we played over a year ago uh so let's just relax and do that all right okay yeah mm -hmm. cool good i mean we have been i just want to make sure that we've all got our expectations set you know well and correct and whatnot mm -hmm. uh cool so what do you remember about the island itself and how it's structured within kind of the world of darkness and the place the fairies it. run 24 hours. Right. Yeah. The yep. single greatest oh, thing. Yeah. Uh, can I move to the world of darkness, yeah. please? please. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. wild. Mm -hmm. It's the best oh, improvement. I mean, Oliver's not from here. He's from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. He he was he was out here because he's a substitute shop teacher. Yeah. yeah you got out. He I was out, out here because there's work out here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then got turned and. Yeah. Yeah. Or embraced if you want to be fancy. Yeah. It's turned. Turned. Yeah. <laughs> I think that in our world, everything's a little closer together. Like, you don't have to spend eight hours driving somewhere because that would just burn all of your nighttime. Yeah. Yeah. I assume I got shipped here in a crate. Like, so shipped to the island in a crate? No, I, I came on the ferry. But, like, yeah. I you know, I'm from out east. Oh. Uh, yeah. mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And, like, I, I, did they just like pay cargo on a Greyhound or? Oh, I hope not. You definitely a, got test around then. Yeah, there's we, a lot of there's a lot of different ways to do that. But why don't we fill in those details while we're playing? Okay. Uh, I've got a couple of ideas on on how to flesh those out because this time for series two we've got more time. Mm -hmm. We have more episodes to really dig in and flesh things out really detail the 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 van we've been driving mm. the new van we've been driving because the last van 
became in werewolfed. <sighs> they yeah. did, and then inflamed, and Poor Van yes. Damme. Well, yes. once you get werewolf blooded, and it's not coming out. Yeah, well, I it's I miss the Zootopia DVD. That's <laughs> what breaks my heart. And we tossed out the seat, and yeah, that's mm-hmm. hard. To you replace. did, yeah, yep. Yeah, you 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 had ripped the seat off, handed it to uh, yeah. Oliver, that then used it as a uh, projectile to attempt I tried to hit. Not to. I tried not to rip it out. I want to point that out. I I think I spent, or Silas spent some quality time in the footwell of the passenger seat <laughs> yep. trying to hide from yeah. a werewolf. Yep. Yes. Just I, like wedged right up in there. Yeah. Oh man, I remember all the messy criticals. <laughs> That's the, so I, I, it's still the most messy criticals in one game I've ever seen. Oh, well we've got a oh, chance to top oh, that then. Oh boy, are you in for a surprise. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna ride in that wait. hunger three for a while here. I think. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. really know anything about like Victoria, the city. We've got mm-hmm. a sheriff. Yeah, for the Camarilla. Uh, well, the it's Camarilla, like a new yeah. foothold, right? Like we mm-hmm. just, yeah, they've just only expanded to Vancouver. But the Island. Anarchs yep. have have the, a barony. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the werewolves seem odd, though. Like they, the um, everybody seemed like, oh, that's weird that werewolves attacked you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the was more surprising is that we survived. Mm. Because usually a werewolf will like walk up to a vampire and just like, it's like drinking a Coke, right? Yeah. Oh, wait, this, I don't even like this. Do vampires right? like eat? I mean, sorry, do werewolves like eat vampires? Not eat, eat. No. 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 We, they don't we, like, like their blood or anything like they, that? Like. From what we know, they just don't like us very much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. They yeah. just don't like us. Yeah. Uh, kind of on principle. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, a werewolf who seeks out vampire blood, uh, a, a lupine, I should say, that seeks out vampire blood would be a problem mm-hmm. for everybody. Mm. Yeah. But that's that's a lupine problem. Uh, it's more, it doesn't matter if they eat you or not, is murder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They just generally don't like they vampires like for some reason yeah okay. for some reason vampires don't know why uh they just know that it's always been that way yeah and that's part of the reason why vampires stay in cities and why travel is very dangerous especially now in the time of the second inquisition mm-hmm. because some humans are now wise to vampires so they have to hide even more which is why it's called vampire the masquerade because you have a masquerade to keep up don't yeah talk about bite club mm-hmm. <laughs> But in most general term, the most general terms, what I remember about Vancouver Island in the world of darkness is that everything sucks just 20% more, say maybe 15% more on a good day. But like, you know, there's, there's just everything is a little more like Tim Burton, Gotham City. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. there's way more newspapers blowing around. Mm-hmm. Um, Streets are shinier. Yeah. Yeah. Almost every... Street lamp is a spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of feeling. Yeah. You've got you've got the right vibe. Yeah. Gothic punk? No. Gothic what? punk was uh sort of how it was described in, in, in the a 90s. lot of previous yeah. a lot of previous editions. Um it still holds true for some people's styles. Um mm-hmm. uh you're gonna definitely see and feel elements of that, you know, within this game and within the first series, uh as well. Um Yeah, about. Okay. Yeah. So you're uh, you had started talking about uh, Vancouver Island kind of being under contention. Mm-hmm. So the Anarch movement and the Camarilla uh, immediately both sent representatives to the island as soon as it kind of opened up because unclaimed territory in the world of darkness within kindred society is almost unheard of. Mm-hmm. And you've got Vancouver, which was a independent city up until about two years ago and now the seneschal mask the nosferatu seneschal is sort of flirting with the camarilla uh and thinking of making vancouver into a uh a full camarilla territory uh because siegfried for a very long time kept vancouver very very closed off to everybody he actually like didn't let certain clans in because he felt that they were too problematic Hmm. uh, with the banes and things that they have and kept it independent, always knew who came in and out, kept it real secure and solid. And when he vanished, a lot of people saw opportunity there and came in. Uh, The Camarilla made overtures to the Seneschal, and now the Seneschal is sort of flirting with the idea of no longer being an independent city and while Siegfried is gone, which should Siegfried return he'd probably be a little upset about. Mm. Um, But a lot of the new 
uh, Primogen Council. Because um, the, the Council of Primogens, for example, your sire, mm-hmm. uh, Heather uh, Tripathy, uh, is the Toreador Primogen of Vancouver. They still keep a Primogen Council, even though they're an, they're an independent city, because uh, Siegfried is, was very old and still keeps that kind of feudal structure that the Camarilla has kept for centuries. Centuries. Right. Siegfried and the Camarilla arrived at it from the same tradition, yes. not him borrowing a Camarilla tradition. Correct. Right. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then okay. people just started adopting the term Primogen because it was just a ubiquitous term at the time. But Vancouver is at this point still an independent city. But the Camarilla are definitely using it as the springboard to try to come to Vancouver Island, Victoria in general. So the Camarilla will definitely say, Victoria, a Camarilla city. Absolutely. We've got a representative over there. We've got a sheriff. We're just setting things up. And Victoria is going to be under, obviously, probably what people are saying, the auspices of Vancouver when Vancouver flips. So there's definitely Mm. going to be a lot of internal politics going on within the Camarilla there. Uh, Seattle's a mess. Nobody talks about it. Um, Yeah. Yep. Uh, What's that? that Too long of a question to answer. Why? Why why is Seattle? Let's find out in game. If that's something you want to find out in game. Uh, If at any point y'all are just like, you know what? Boat. Go. (laughs) We'll go. And then it will be not a drop to drink, a tale of Seattle by night mm-hmm. or Vancouver by night. Hmm. Uh, you can do whatever you like. Okay. Uh, I don't recommend that. It wasn't it wasn't if top like to. of mind before, but. Yeah. Uh, but keep in mind, Vancouver. Episode. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Onsen episode. You did mention you wanted a beach day episode. I definitely have that in my notes. Uh, uh, I, mean, I put a beach day episode in my alien campaign. I, there were so many bodies. <laughs> well, let's keep that tradition alive, shall we? Uh, so, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check that out later. Um, so, uh, what was I saying? I, I, uh, we're I talking about like lost the Camarilla and. Stuff. Oh yeah, Camarilla. I have a question yes. about Victoria. It does Elysium happen? It does, but it moves around. Sometimes Elysium happens. Elysium. The Matt Damon movie? I was thinking Sailor Moon. Uh, well, I tail two, <laughs> two sides of the same coin, really. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> yep. Am I going to meet Matt Damon? <laughs> Is Matt Damon a vampire? Would you like to meet Matt Damon? <laughs> oh, I mean. Is that a Maybe. real life or an in-game question? In-game question. No. Oh, okay. No, I'm good. All right. <laughs> what was your question? I my oh, Elysium. Matt Damon just knocked every thought out of my brain for a second. <laughs> you know, I was the just Matt like, Damon uh, movie. Yeah. Does, does, oh, does yeah. the Matt Damon movie ha- uh, exist play? in universe? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Elysium is uh is uh, kind of vampiric safe zone. Uh, camera lit. Sometimes have it in one place. Um, but Elysium is pretty ubiquitous across all sex, uh, depending on how it's run in the city you're in, but it is neutral ground. And sometimes it's a party. Sometimes it's held once a month. Um, it really depends on where you're at and how it's run. Uh, how it's run in Victoria is that it moves around and there aren't enough camera people to attend at this time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's something that, uh, uh, Sheriff Jackson Quinn yeah. has talked to you about, but more things have to happen in order for uh, a greater Camarilla structure to be here in Victoria and Vancouver Island as a whole as well uh, because people are trying to claim Vancouver Island as its own domain and own territory. It's not just Victoria Um, because there's stuff up island and we'll get into that. But uh, to kind of set this up a little bit more is that you as players between the Anarch movement, who has a presence here, and the Camarilla, and whatever the heck else is here, a lot of the future of this place will depend on you and your actions. Where it falls, where it goes, how it looks. The world is your oyster, because right now, even you know, two years in, this is unclaimed territory. It is the wild, wild, wild west here. Um, and it is mirroring a lot of how Vancouver got or Victoria got started and Vancouver Island got populated with trappers and the gold rush and everything. It's 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 almost a second undead gold rush 
uh, to claim this new territory, to claim domains. Um, seems like it'd be a good place for some vampire criminals to hang out and hide when, or establish themselves as a new domain starts to come uh, to fruition. Yes. Uh, when when you say that, because um, the, the island was kind of closed off from vampires coming over, yeah. is it just the vampires, like the werewolves were kind of already here or they, they didn't have that issue? I could tell you, but would you rather find out in game? I'm willing to find out in game. Excellent. I'm just mm-hmm. curious about mm-hmm. the the whole block off thing. Yes, um, that's uh, something. As as far as the whole block off thing, uh, we are going to talk about a little bit more um, what you want out of this new series and what do you want to find out and what do you want to pursue. Um, so, uh, can I hold the answer to that question yeah, for absolutely. a little bit and a little later in the conversation? Is that cool? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. You somebody uh, over here I, I said was, um. Yeah, I was going to have a question about Elysium, but like I guess I can find out in game. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. All I right. I don't need to ask that right now. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, and you also you have a, a, a lexicon as well in case there's any um Yeah, it was more just terms. like a, like a general purpose of it. You know what I oh, mean? Like, um, why, like, obviously the vampire clans are like kind of at odds with each other more often than not, right? So it's like, why do they need to make a place that's neutral ground for them to get together because they just hate each other anyway, right? Because as much as vampires hate each other, they yeah. need each other to survive. Okay. To create structures, to attempt to control mortal institutions, to maintain the masquerade. Okay. The traditions are in place, or at least the the Camarilla really enforces the traditions, the six traditions, um, an incredible amount in order to try and keep vampiric society safe. That's why they coined the term kindred, because mm-hmm. we're all in this together kind of feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like. The vampires have a match at WrestleMania, but they leading up to WrestleMania, they won the tag titles together and they need to coexist. Correct. Okay. Yep. I yeah. get it. Every every vampire is uh is a mismatched uh double heel tag team. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. I got you. I do. I, I'll just put everything in wrestling terms for you. I can absolutely do yeah, that. Makes um, complete sense. Yep. Right, I, I have one hundred and ten percent. There actually, uh, there was a uh, uh, pro wrestling supplement in the world of darkness uh, back in the nineties. Oh, really? Yeah, it was a supernatural wrestling league. <laughs> oh, it was. It's silly. I'll that see if I can. Goofy. I'll, yeah. I'll see if I can find it for you. It sounds very yeah. goofy. Uh, so is everybody kind of set and, and sort of remembers like where Vancouver Island's at? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I the uh, the inflection threw me off. I was like, ah, Cameron wants to keep talking, and he doesn't because I misheard. The one time ever I don't want to keep talking. Yeah, it's incredible, really. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you're like, enjoy this moment. <laughs> Furthermore. <laughs> uh, all right, let me just check my notes here. Uh, man, normally, like. When I run games like this, it's 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 especially for session zeros, it's it's usually fairly structured. But I'm actually totally fine and happy with this being loosey goosey because it's been so it's been so damn long, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm I'm just <laughs> we could sit here for an hour and not talk, and I would be real happy just soaking up all your energy yeah, it's <laughs> real bad for the youtube audience. oh yeah yeah 100 yeah. like absolutely oh hey. they just sat there I, yeah how, how well, far did you skip ahead like 45 minutes they're still doing the same thing i mean you say that but if we released an hour-long video of us just sitting here and not talking to each other someone would watch it we have that stream <laughs> every year yeah. yeah oh yeah the the cam and christmas yeah cam and christmas where you just sit there and sip whiskey and say nothing yeah, yeah. oh god in front of the fire oh it's very meditative yeah that's yeah. awesome all right so we've all agreed we're just going to do that sure all right cool all right just stare at the camera then let's crack out the scotch all right well we should probably do things okay that felt weird uh <laughs> <laughs> um no but it, uh, seriously this is this is really good so it's been uh a year and uh a year and three months what do you remember about session zero from last year uh, boundaries. Yep. <laughs> yep. Boundaries. I remember Adam saying no space, no outer space, no outer space, and yeah. no oceans. Yeah. Yep. Which turns out vampires are scared to death of both. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's very many vampire astronauts, is there? Uh, Not as far as I know. Yeah. Not as far as I'm aware. Would they be good? Can they go into space? 
there's an anime about it this season. <laughs> anime is not real. What? <laughs> Adam. <laughs> Sorry. How dare you? I don't tell this. you that wrestling's not real. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? It's because I know it's not real. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> You monster. Yeah, I'm going to find the thing you love and destroy it. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, it's Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Here, yeah. give it to me. Yeah. Do it, you coward. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> I remember uh, yeah. Veils and something else. Lines and Veils. Lines mm-hmm. and Veils. Yep. There we go. Yeah, we did uh, safety rules and lines and Veils. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's go over those again. Okay, we'll go over the safety rules that we're going to be using. Uh, they aren't going to be any different from last year, which is the X card and lines and veils. So the X card mm-hmm. during the game, during any point in the game, including from from this point forward, if you are uncomfortable about anything, if anything you are engaging in in this game crosses a line, then uh, how we had it when we were in the Belfry is that you touch the front of the table. Um, uh so the X card can be just about anything. It's just emotion or something that we all agree on uh, that we're going to touch. And if that happens, uh, we immediately stop the action and whatever's going on, we roll it back and we take it again. Nobody gets to ask what the weird thing was. If somebody wants to volunteer, they can, but nobody needs to ask. It's just, it's an immediate stop, go back, take it in a different direction. Mm-hmm. That's it. Okay. It is an absolute safety mechanic it is pulling the ripcord, uh, and then we're just going to take it in a different direction. We've all agreed that we're going to be watching out for each other and looking out for each other. That is what we are going to be doing. Okay? And we've already done that. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes? Good, 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 good. So, uh, for the X card, we're not going to actually have like a physical X card in the table. Let's use uh, Becca's Jihad Diary there as the X card. Okay? So... Well, I mean, you move it back. It was pretty there. I was just gonna say we well, could point at it or reach toward it. Yeah, can you like? Can you just? There you go. Yeah. So the X card, if you just indicate uh, towards Beckett's jihad, Beckett's jihad diary, uh, there at the end of the table. Um, that's it. That's gonna be the X card. Is everybody good with that? Yep. Yeah. What are you doing? I think these are my dice. <laughs> I think they were up they on were, the shelf. They came from one of the display things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm missing my die tens for my. I had two of these red gem sets. Oh. Well, all right. Did oh, you yeah. perhaps bring them to the moon base at any time in the past? I can't imagine why. Uh, <laughs> well, it's not like you do any tabletop stuff. Yeah. Yet. Right. Oh. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Please center that. Yeah, please. There, thank you, Heather. Oh, bless you. Bless your heart. Please. It's, it'll do. Is it off still? Just oh, don't man. look at it. Don't look at it. It's my book right in front of don't me. Don't look at it's it. It's okay. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to look at it. Don't. All right. So the X card. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to point at the thing <laughs> that should not be. Um, we'll point at the... Uh, uh. Uh, so if anything is uh, uncomfortable... If any line is being crossed or anything like that, if you point at the book, we stop, we take it back, that's it. Okay. okay? Uh, do we want to practice? Yeah, 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 we absolutely can do that. Oh, Adam, could you tell me about the thing you told me about earlier that you saw? Oh, Clamonaise? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we take that back. Uh, you can ask the question again or a different question. <laughs> could you never mention that thing ever again? How about another clam based product? <laughs> <laughs> Clamato juice. Yeah. Clam chop. Yeah. There you go. Uh, <laughs> so we Wait, would, that's, that's we would want to stop talking about clams if somebody <laughs> pointed at the thing. Yeah. Right. Let's just, yeah, that was good practice. Yeah. Right. So I, let's definitely not do that for real. Okay. Uh, yeah. So does that make sense? Yes. Though? Yeah. I yeah. mean, I, you know, we're, we're a bunch of comedians. We've already gone mm-hmm. over a lot of our boundaries and stuff together. I'm just letting the audience know mm-hmm. um, that that's not actually going to be an issue. And I, at least I don't think it will be. With everybody, yeah, no. we're just making goofs about clams. Clamato, you mentioned, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, clamato, it's good. Yeah, it shockingly, it's fine. Yeah, it's kind of salty tomato. Oh, I juice. know what yeah. it tastes like. I'm, I disagree yeah. with you about it being fine. Yeah, it's gross. Well, let's agree to disagree then. 
Okay. <laughs> but only because it's you. Blah. Uh, but something very important. Unless the vampire war began. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to start a war with me. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think anybody would. Uh, so, um, and we all have to agree, even though we are comedians and things, uh, and we like goof em ups, nobody yeah. uses the X card as a joke. Yes. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, and then the next thing is lines and veils. Okay, so uh, let's go with veils first. Veils are things that you're okay with being in the game, content you're okay with being in the game, but it's a fade to black. Mm. Okay. Uh, so, for example, if somebody, one of somebody's veils was uh, sex. Sex scenes are not described. You're just kind of like you go into it and then we just narratively fade to black and then it comes back up and like somebody's putting on their boots or whatever it is they were wearing uh, at the time. Uh, it's it, merely the aftermath. The actual thing isn't described. Uh, this could be things like uh, torture. Yeah, stuff like that. So if that's somebody's veils, that's what we're going to do. We're generally going to be running the game at about a uh, R-rated level, uh, steering towards like, you know, just to give everybody kind of a base of like, here's how intense we can get, like an R-rated level. But we're going to hone in on everybody's comfort levels now in this, now that we've kind of gone over and set the scene, talked about the world of darkness, uh, reminisced about uh, series one, and then uh, we'll talk about how the game's gonna be structured, and then we'll go into uh, series two and where we wanna go, where mm -hmm. we wanna head. It has been, as we had mentioned a few times, a year and three months or so. Um, lines and veils may have changed in that time. What you were comfortable with, uh, we're just gonna take everything again and um, make sure that Everybody's on the same page. Lines and veils aren't just for me as the storyteller. They're for everybody because we are all here at the table at the same time telling a collaborative story. All of us are responsible for each other's safety, including mine. So let's go over veils first. As I had said before the break, veils are a uh, fade to black. Things that you're generally okay with, content you're, content you're generally all right with, uh, but you'd rather there be... Uh, kind of a, a fade to black, no major descriptions or anything. Uh, very much like a PG-13 it uh, sort of style. It's the closest thing I have to a metaphor for that. Uh, so, does anybody have any veils? Uh, would you, do you need some examples or uh, anything? I don't think we need to go into like graphic descriptions of sexual intercourse. Or... That's fair. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Torture. Torture okay. is probably yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. I can see for comedic effect torture done badly yeah. by Oliver. Is that acceptable? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'd, I'd like to see the situation where Oliver's like, yeah, I really need to torture this person. Okay. All right, cool. cool. I just want to make I just yeah. want to make sure yeah. that we know where it is and I can check in. Okay. Um uh and I don't, you know, we can check in if 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 the situation ever comes up, I will definitely make note of it. Yeah. Uh and then just be like, "All right, how would you like to play this?" Uh and then you can say, "No." Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I had a line on torture. Yeah, you specifically. Uh, I have. Uh, I have the notes here from the session zero. Uh, joints. Yeah, joints and hand crushing. Yeah, no. but uh, the the line on torture was like just as like an interrogation technique it would make me angry to see. Okay. Hmm. Angry as a player to see. Yeah. Okay. Angry as a player to see. Got it. Okay. Uh, so that's a hard line. No torture. Yeah, please. Okay. Hard line. No torture. Um. By players, or can it be mentioned as something that has happened yep. to somebody else? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you draw me, like, what up to what are you cool with when it comes to the topic of uh, torture? Because it is a, a broad thing. Like, uh, for example, if you found somebody that had been... I, I, I don't want to give examples because I don't want to cross your boundary, so I'm going to have to ask you where that line might be. Like, yeah, it is mostly it is the party performing acts of torture. Okay, got it. Cool. Uh, does physical torture? Yep. Okay, intimidation. Fine. Cool. All right. Good Play, cop, bad playing cop. terrible music, flashing the lights. That's okay. Fine. Yeah. All right. All right. Totally cool. Uh, intimation that it might happen. Yep. Okay. Cool. Just not actually doing it. Yep. All right. Great. Can everybody agree with that? Everybody's good with yep. that. Yep. That it, that's a hard line. That it that sneezes out. Okay. Yep. Great. Uh, okay. So that's a line. Uh, yeah. For for veils, I had uh, long term illness like cancer or things things like that. Sure. It was just like yeah. I don't want to like mentioned. We don't have, have someone slowly dying in a hospital. No. Okay. Yeah. We don't. 
We don't need that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so a veil, that would be, it could be mentioned, yeah. but never, no. We're not like focusing on we it. Do, yeah, we don't need to spotlight that. Okay, got it. Cool. Thank you very much. Good. Uh, anybody else want to throw one out there? No, that pretty much covers everything I was worried about. You were worried about? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, so I uh, generally, uh, so lines, lines, torture, party members doing any torture, that's out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Scaring the bejesus out of somebody. That's fine. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even like a, a roof dangle or something is mm. fine. Just. I don't think yeah. any of us would ever do it. I mean, this is maybe right. this isn't quite the same, but it's like party members actively trying to sabotage each other or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Vampires are very, I know, I understand that vampires are like, don't generally get along with each other. Right. But I would prefer it if we all try to work together. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if that's like a line or a veil or anything like that, but just like you know what I mean. Like that's a good voucher to mention. Trying to go against each other for the sake of like because of their character, but it's like I, I like I'm not trying to tell you how to play your character either, but I would prefer it if we make an attempt at being civil with each other as far as our characters go. Yes. Yeah. Now. Can we discuss that? Can we discuss the nature of that before yeah. it happens? Yeah. Like, I, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. You don't want to see it happen in the moment, and you don't want to see people working at cross purposes, but there could be a rich vein of betrayal and redemption Mm -hmm. that could happen yeah i mean like there's obviously there's a lot of gray areas right right i'm just i'm just trying to get a a, a more of a sense of what you mean yeah i think it's just more of like you want everybody to work together you don't want anybody to work against anybody else you don't want one player to work against another player's agency i guess yeah 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 work against their agency is what i'm trying Mm. to get at yeah okay like you know what I mean? Like, let's say Heather's like, yeah, I really want to do this thing. And then Corey just goes and like screws it up for her, like purposefully, like goes out of her way to like, mm-hmm. I'm not just saying, I'm not saying you're going to do it, but I'm just making an example. But like, yeah, one of us that says like, well, my character wants to do this. Mm-hmm. And then somebody goes like, well, I'm mm-hmm. stop him. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, that sucks. <laughs> Without it going to stop them with no motivation. Yeah. Like okay. just. Being a jerk just for the sake of being, being a jerk. Yeah. I don't think anybody's going to do it. No, like, no, I no. Really but it don't. should be very explicitly stated. 100%. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah. I just, I just want to make sure that we know like kind of where it is. Um, like kind of where the line is. Like, I don't want your reason to be, well, I'm a vampire. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'd like a reason, you know what I mean? Like, I don't mind like if there's a reason for it, like some inner working or like, so like, people playing evil yeah just that's like, basically I'm yeah i'm evil yeah, yeah. you know i'm yeah, evil I want. yeah the chaotic evil party yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, right yeah that's not that what that's PPing. that's what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah. got it yeah all right yeah because everybody you know your people and you return you know turn into monsters you're trying to navigate the night that is kind of what vampire is about yes um and a lot of people believe uh, when i say people i mean vampires uh, believe that betrayal is inherent within vampire but yeah. the reason that coteries exist is that vampires can't exist without each other. They can't, they, mm. they, they, as much as they may hate each other, sometimes they need each other to survive. Mm-hmm. Um, so I also have no trouble with two players at the table being like, okay, I was thinking of doing this thing to, or I was doing this thing that might, you know, go, go against, silas's wishes Mm -hmm. is that a story you want to explore with me because we're all here telling the same story Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. the thing consensual betrayal exactly yeah Yeah. and i'm fine if it's like oh oh that'd be cool yeah Yeah. no do that awesome yeah generally speaking i want interesting things to happen to my character yeah and if those are not pleasant things for my character that isn't necessarily me yeah right yeah Mm -hmm. yes and that's a very good point is that Again, just to reiterate, because it's been a while and we're going to maybe play a pretty intense game because we got time mm-hmm. and we got details and uh, uh, a storyteller with boundless enthusiasm for this. <laughs> um, your characters are not you. They are people that you are piloting. 
driving, experiencing things through, but you are you and your character is your character. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that is something that is a conceit we can all agree on mm -hmm. at the table and understand. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just because your character takes an action that you may not, the whole point is that we are experiencing this story in a safe space, in a space where we are, yes, we are entertaining people, but we, in order to do that, in order to make the show and tell the story that we want to make, we all have to feel safe to be able to explore and kind of go some places that we might otherwise not. That's part of why we're doing this and why we're trying this new thing and doing new stuff with this setting and with this system. Uh, so it's important to note that just because your character takes an action that you may not take does not imply or say anything about you as a person. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That goes for you out there too. All right? Because I remember that being a point of contention from the session zero is you are not your character. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. that's what games are. Yeah. If you kill Silas, I'm making his shimisi. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's He's just going to be all vicissitude all the time. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so those unfamiliar words. Uh, Zemisi <laughs> is a uh, clan, one of the vampiric clans. Uh, vicissitude is, and I remember very, very, you you said, don't ever say this word again. Uh I'm not going to. Let me think of a different way to say it. Uh, Body plasticity? Let's say that. Yes. Uh, vicissitude is they can take your body and... Usually uh, their own. Manipulate it. Usually their own. They <laughs> usually do it. But they can make you into a chair. Not like a wooden chair. A person chair. Gross. For example. Yeah. They're, <laughs> they're the body horror clan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Aesthetic. Yes. Yes. They're the body horror clan. Um... <laughs> It's, they're gross. Yeah. 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 They're all gross. Uh, They don't all do that. They don't all have to. I mean, no, the, so they're don't. the Draculas. Uh, well. Uh, <laughs> so therein lies a tale <laughs> that we don't have time for. Uh, <laughs> Jacob make that noise before. What was that? That was new. Uh, that was uh, my... Uh, Ooh. That was the lore trying to get out, uh, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, and being yeah. like, "No, no, this is a ninety-minute conversation." At well, least. you do know that if we ever run into one, Oliver's definitely calling them Dracula. So I hope mm. you're all ready for this. <laughs> blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. I want to make a chair of you. <laughs> blah. blah, blah, blah. Yes, you would make a nice say chaise. Blah. Yeah. Uh, to yourself, really. Yeah. Shouldn't have made that noise. No, that's that's fair. You're right. You're right. I I accept this. Mm -hmm. I, I accept this deep deep within my soul. Where the uh, Is the Oliver gonna from. survive? I don't know. <laughs> that's up in the air. There's a that's, very strong I, chance I, I that's up in the air. Gets yeah. murked by somebody, right? <laughs> Maybe, but you got a coterie to look out for you. Yeah, yeah we're supposed to be a family. Yeah. Of some yeah, sort. Of sort. Of sorts. Uh you're getting there. You're all still getting to know each other. Um all right, so anybody else have any hard lines, any veils that they want people to know about? Anything that you straight uh, up don't want in the game? Um, I, I think, I, well, I said it last time, but I, I mean, obviously. I don't yeah, that's, my, it's, it's my been a while. My yep. character to be alone in space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or yeah. alone in the middle of the ocean. Yes. But those two things, I don't think vampires do either of those things, so. Not typically. No, yeah. They don't do well with. Well, yeah. I mean, like, I guess you could, like, I could get kidnapped and then just dumped in the middle of the ocean. I would prefer not to. You know, uh, yeah, don't say prefer not to. You so just like, say, I, just, well, I would not like, yeah, that. yeah, don't. I'm not going to do that. Okay, yeah. thank yep. you. Yeah, there will be no, no experiencing the infinite void. Okay, yeah, yep, nope, definitely not. Uh, you're still cool, like, with like a speedboat chase, yeah, for yeah, example? yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, just like the idea of like getting left in the middle of the ocean by alone. Myself, yes, know. I get it. I have the same fear uh, as we'd stated before the ocean is full of liquid nightmares uh something i do recall is that you said you wanted to know it was in the ocean yeah yeah well, okay we're gonna do that good all right <laughs> uh so um good 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 excellent all right so that's lines and veils anybody else have any questions or anything like that all right no. i have a line okay uh claustrophobia hmm. um oh that's that's yeah. one of mine hmm. uh like it's it's a weird thing with me, and I don't mind going into detail. Like a Japanese capsule hotel, fantastic, awesome, cozy. 
yeah, comforting. Exactly. Literally sleeping in a coffin? Fantastic. Mm. I could absolutely do that. Mm -hmm. So long as I knew nothing was on the lid mm. and I wasn't buried. It's being in that kind of a space or like a cave in where I know there's like 18 tons of rock above me. It's it's it's, it's, yeah. your, uh, it's your lack of agency to get out. Correct. Right. That is absolutely correct. Yep. I, I can understand that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's it's the it's the it's having lack of a, having agency taken away from me in that way uh, is a big no. Like I'm even right now getting like a little sweaty. Um, so that's a big that's a big line for me. Uh, so if we could not do that. Yeah. Let's all not do that. I'm good with that. Cool. Honestly, I've yeah. never, I didn't really think about that, but yep. now that I've thought of the TV shows I've seen do that. I'm okay mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. yeah. Like, and to be very clear, like if you want to capture a vampire and like, you know, stake them, put them in a coffin and actually bury them, that's fine. We don't have to describe that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's more of a veil, I guess. That would be a veil for me. Okay. So long as I just don't want it described mm -hmm. and I don't want it done to me. And I don't have to think about it too hard. But mm -hmm. if you want to do it to one of the, like, you know, SPCs or something like that, okay. Yeah. Cool. If they deserve it or something, I, even if they don't, because <laughs> you just, I don't know, want to make the biggest heel turn imaginable, like, uh, do it. I said, like, don't do it to me. And it's like, yeah, how was your game of Vampire? Yeah, I put the storyteller in a coffin. Coffin? Yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> like, buried their sleep? ass. No, we just, no, no. It was a buried alive match. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It was like the Duhast video, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I put God in a coffin. Yeah. yeah. Eventually, right? I remember a line yeah. from last time yeah. that's related to that, which was uh, like the domination paralysis, that kind of thing. Yeah. Having yeah. your body taken over or your yeah. your character okay. taken over. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's important because uh, we have a lot. There are, uh, as we'd kind of gone over before, but like in the session zero, there's like two powers that uh, can influence or straight up just like take away your uh, character's agency. Yeah. Uh, dominate, which is just literally you can just be like sleep, and somebody goes like, all right. It 100% always works on on mortals. Mortals don't get resistances to vampire powers. Mm. Uh, oh they, shame. Yeah, they they suck. Mm. Man, people suck in this. Uh, in this setting, oh, you can do whatever, whatever must, you want. Must to suck stinky, to suck. Yeah, babies. right. Exactly. Yes, must must suck to suck, and boy, do they. Mm. Um, but having your agency taken away, uh, like, how do people feel about that? Mm. I have I have a way around it and a uh, suggestion, but just mm -hmm. at first blush, how do you feel about? How do you feel? I'm about more that? just like I don't want to watch any of you do it to somebody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I understand that there's going to be consequences for our actions. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. like, if it happens to me, like, I'm okay with it. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, if I screw up and someone's, like, some powerful... Like, if I make a powerful vampire man, they just, like, dominate my mind. And I'm yeah. just like, yeah, well, I mean, I kind of deserved it, right? But <laughs> I just don't want to see someone do it just, like, to get what they want, I guess. Right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, using it for... Like, someone against their will who's just, like... <sighs> I guess there's lots of gray areas. There's a lot of gray areas. There's yeah. a lot of gray areas, right? But I think it's more like using it to like get something they want, like against someone's will. Like if they say no and then you do it, right? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Yep. Um. So can I like throw circumventing it? consent? I guess right. Like, got it. Yeah. Mm. Now I mean definitely like no no dominate sex times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. 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 Definitely not. Mm -hmm. uh that that i remember from last time that's that's a hard out but yeah. like uh telling a security guard to leave yeah something yeah, like that's that that's like fine Getting someone right? to do that's my okay. taxes no, that's yeah. that's mostly yeah i think that's okay. fine it's like uh, the, the jedi mind trick like so an influence mm -hmm. ignore yeah, us it's like dominate mind shoot yourself right like that's yeah. messed up i'm just like yeah. what <laughs> why would you do what that? about just like the um, leave you. the dune bene Gesserit voice yeah like that okay yeah. I like, mean, like, that's, oh, God, even, I guess, like, if you're in danger, then, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, do what you got to do to stay alive, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. But I just don't want to see it used, like. Maliciously? Maliciously. Okay. And with no reason, right? Like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah I yeah. think, I, th I think, and again, correct me if I'm wrong here. It's, you don't want to see anybody do something just to be able to do it. Yes. Yeah, there yeah. has to be a reason for it. Yes, please. It can't be a power trip. Yeah. Um, now, you know, vampires, again, 
that like you could something with some powers you can go up to a mortal and just be like uh boop yourself and they will yeah but there's no <clears throat> there are consequences for that and the the, the whole humanity sy- sy- uh, system um kind of plays into that uh as far as like there being consequences mechanically for that kind of behavior mm-hmm. uh but like let's say you were being chased by somebody through a parking garage and you saw somebody about to get in their car yeah and you just ran up to somebody and really like, give me your keys because you had to take their car to get away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's fine. You think that's, that's okay? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But okay. it's just like... It's more along the lines of just like, hey, I need you to do this thing. They're like, no. Mm-hmm. And you're like, can't screw this. Oh, like, uh, okay. You know what I mean? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Mm. No, I understand. I understand. And it's it, totally okay. And let me be very clear too. It's totally okay that we figure that out as we're going along. Yeah. That's what the X card is for. That's why we have safety rules. That's why we all agree and have a session zero to talk about this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So how about your character? Mm, I don't really want any of the other players to do it to me. You know what I mean? I prefer it like... Oh, no, that that I think gets yeah, covered by... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. No, 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 no. That's kind of what I meant. I'm just mostly talking about like between players. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I don't want anyone to like try to mind control me or like... Sure. You know? Unless yep. you have a very good reason, right? Like, I mean, we could talk about it, but it's just like I'd much rather it not happen that way. Uh, let's let's change it from much rather to we don't do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so yeah, no, <clears throat> just don't. I I think the general rule is don't fuck with each other if it doesn't make a good story and the other person doesn't like really agree to it, mm-hmm. and that up up to and including we've already established some boundaries outside of the game that we're not talking about here that just amongst ourselves being actors Mm -hmm. like i trust you to help me tell a good story we're trusting each other to keep each other safe and tell a good story yeah it's important to talk about these things it's incredibly important to talk about these things uh at the table especially when you have things like that in play so does anybody have anything they want to add or any nuance they would like to to put on dominate and then we'll talk about presence so you're cool to like have you know big if if there's a consequence for it and there's an actual reason for it, you're okay with it happening to your character. My character, yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just as long as none of the other players do it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Uh, and you're cool generally. Like it's like I don't want like if there's a disagreement between players, I don't want the one player to think that the the solution is just use dominate mind or something. Yeah. You know I mean? Got it. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, you no. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. I don't want to be yeah. doing yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, That's essentially what I'm aiming at, right? Yeah. Like, and, and I don't want to watch you like dominate mine immortal to get them to like do whatever you want, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, some weird slave, right? <laughs> like, it's just like that makes me. Wild. I mean, like, I don't, I don't mind if like our characters are fighting a little bit amongst themselves, yeah, 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 yeah. different people. But as players, I don't want to get into a big fight at yeah. the table. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Anybody want to add anything to that? No. Okay, so just show of hands uh, how many people are okay having their character have Dominate used on them. Cool, excellent, good. Uh, And we've all agreed not to do any Dominate powers on each other, player character to player character. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Cool, great. Uh, And um, generally cool doing it on mortals if you're not being a fucking edgelord about it. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Great. Good. All right. Beautiful. And all of this can change at any time. Mm -hmm. That's what the X card is for. We roll it back. Don't have to explain it. If you want to talk about it later or anything outside of the game, absolutely. 100%. But we don't have to. Okay? Okay. Okay. Cool. So now presence. Presence influences emotions. It's not a direct, you do what I say, or anything like that. But it is a... Uh, you can draw attention to yourself with it. Um, you can make somebody feel real good and like you're the coolest person in the world. It's an influence. It's not a direct control. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do we feel about powers like that? I'm okay with it. We okay. still have like a chance to make a decision, <clears throat> right? Like it's not just like... Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it just gives like some bonus dice to social roles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's for the scene I am the absolute object of your desire okay yeah and then you are expected to act 
accordingly. Doesn't necessarily mean sexy desire. That doesn't necessarily mean sex. It just yeah. means like, I become your fin dom. Well, a financial. Mm. Dom. Okay, good. Yeah, right. I pictured okay. a dolphin. Yeah, yeah. And no, I no, 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 no. I pictured a Finnish person. <laughs> no, I actually just I pictured Vin Diesel with a shark fin on his oh, head. Oh, okay. Oh. Dom, his dom. character yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the fin. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Family. Or uh, Finn Dom is the uh, fan fiction somebody wrote from the uh, main character of Rapunzel and the main character of Fast and Furious. Oh. That could be a good slash yeah. 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 The Finn Dom Dom. That's a very <laughs> special one. Thousands of views. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so presents. How do we feel about that? I think I'm okay with it. Yeah? yeah cool I'm with okay it? With it yeah. I mean, I took it, so I would hope to be okay with yeah. it. Yeah. No, I, well, it's it's it's... Mortals in this game are dumb. And again, it's it's not dumb, but like you can do anything to them. Uh, mm -hmm. They aren't people. <laughs> I thought we established they were. Yeah, no, they are. It's just no, me they and totally my are. Feelings, okay? Yeah, but it's 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 uh, again, your your character's actions aren't necessarily your actions. I'm not mm -hmm. trying to give you a get out of jail free card. I'm trying to give you a different perspective as yeah. well. Okay. Okay. Um, and like, you know, if some sweet little old lady is just like, oh, I need some help crossing the street. And you're just like, I am your Lord and master. <laughs> That's just a douche move. And she's just like, okay, butterscotch. Thank you very much. Like, you know, d just don't be a fucking edge lord. I yeah. think is what we're generally yeah. all agreeing. Hmm. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. Cool. Great. You can be, you can be a little chaos goblin, but just do it for a reason. Yeah. yeah. All right. Great. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just picturing this vampire going around and making a little old lady army because it's that's all they can manage to get. Yeah. It's like the producers, <laughs> or like the uh, the Sith path in Kotor, where it's like light side path, help the old lady across the street. Dark side path, push old lady. <laughs> yeah, it's like what is this <laughs> choice? It's not a normal push, it's a yeah. force push. So she yeah. got launched like six city blocks. Like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. There's just like her silhouette in the building across the street. <laughs> yeah. Like what is? <laughs> yes, what experience the, the that, power yeah. of the dark side. <laughs> so that's essentially what I'm getting at. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and again, this game we're going to go into the kind of game we want to play, but. Uh, you know, th this sort of dark humor can definitely be a part of things. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> man, when I think about it in the context of vampire, like, you know, like pushing an old lady, I'm like, ah, oh, that's, that's awful. But when you're like, force push a little old lady into the sun, <laughs> high comedy, yeah. like, hey, right? Uh, See, so we, weird. we, we have to be very careful with mm -hmm. how things are presented and how we go about it too. Yeah. And that's also up to me with like, you know, the kind of style of game that you want to play and how it's described. Because, I don't know, a little old lady might be a racist. Who knows? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> little racist old lady? If you could th literally throw her across the street. And we don't have to describe it. You know, think about every movie where you've seen, like, a little old lady toddle into the middle and just, like, turn around and be like, ah, and then a bus comes along and hits her. That's mm -hmm. funny. So think of it in, also think of it in those terms. And that's up to me to not be like, you know, this little old lady like was really great and like to make you feel shitty about it. You know, mm -hmm. that's not it's not what I'm about. That's not what we're about because we're all telling the story together. Ghouls. How do we feel about that? I'm OK with it. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Ghouls are good. Do you know what a ghoul is? No. Ghoul is a human you have blood bound. Think Renfield to Dracula. Oh, like a slave? Not always doesn't have to be sorry no no worries doesn't have to be uh not always um when you blood bond a human they are essentially addicted to your blood and you have to keep feeding them and stuff mm -hmm. uh and that relationship can look Very like weird. a lot of different things yeah yeah it's not always like renfield like uh, with the you know like nah, nah this is my master mm, i want to lick your toenails <laughs> <laughs> like it's not always yeah. like that it can be but again, we can decide what these things want to, like, you know, are going to take, you know, be yeah. and and form. I guess, like, I am okay with it as long as, you know, like, I'm okay with, like, this is what every time I'm saying it, I'm, like, thinking of other players. I don't care what NPCs do. They can do whatever they want for mm -hmm. the most part, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. they can just 
Sure. They can have a ghoul. But I'm like, for other players, I'm like, you can have a ghoul. Just don't do anything weird around me. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. I don't. Oh. Yeah. I yeah. Don't. yeah. No, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't be an edgelord. Yeah. My, my yeah. understanding of ghouls is that they 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 kind of acquire power from, from your they blood do. as well. They stop and, aging. Uh, yep. So you could view it as a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, like, there are some people that like ghouled their grandmother because they couldn't stand to watch her die okay like and she's unhealthily addicted to their blood but you know they make sure that yeah. that's you know the case they're they are they're not they're addicted and that could mean enslaved mm -hmm. uh but it really depends on on context really yeah again a lot of gray area the world of darkness just generally has gray areas all around yeah, yeah that's mm. that's part of the that's part of the point but you can run any kind of game that you want in the world of darkness and these things don't even have to come into play mm. uh but i did remember that a couple of my players uh at the end of the last series when i said how intense can we get uh two of you said let's just ratchet it up to 10 oh so yeah. i've gotta mm. i've gotta figure out you know we've got to negotiate what that means Mm -hmm. um, and the kind of game that you, even if you still want to play it, because a lot of things may have changed in a while. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. All right. The game that we played, fantastic. The story holds. Wonderful. These are the characters and these are the uh, things that they do and they want. You kind of have that in your mind. We can change all of that now. It has been a long time since we've been together and we've all changed and grown in that time we haven't just like frozen in amber and then sat back down at the table from the end of the last game you might want something different out of this game now as a player you might want to experience something different through your characters so what kind of a game do you want to play what do you want to experience what do you want to explore within the world of darkness and vampire the masquerade in context or if you're just like, hey, the last game was great. Do that more. Yeah. That's good. Uh, I want to learn more about it, right? But yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to just like, I could just, just sit down and read the book, but that's boring. I'd rather learn that it. It's pretty through. well written. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, mean like, yeah. Because, you know, me, there's, there's people that write I know that <laughs> for the books <laughs> yeah. that, you know, they've written some of the fiction yeah, in yeah. that I know. I know like, I, they're you know, very good, but it's like. Yeah. Yeah. There's letters and stuff in I there. Think, I think the, ex my experience and my, um, there is merit to me reacting through Oliver, yeah, to all this stuff and mm -hmm. learning about this world of darkness and how things work, and rather than just knowing it, yeah, right. There's something to be said about. Well, I don't know how these interactions work between yeah. these vampire clans, but I mean, I'd rather just find out, right? Yeah, and make mistakes while I'm doing it and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, yeah, that's always been more interesting to me as far as mm. like what we're doing. So it's not that the book is boring; it's that this is more interesting for yes. you. This is a better is vehicle that... for learning, for yeah, me than just like reading the book and being like, "Oh, okay, yeah. these are how these clans interact with mm. each other." Yeah, mm. yep, yeah. yeah, and that that's what works for you. Because I mean, I don't, I don't know if the you know the books are boring or anything uh like that <laughs> I never said they were uh, no no so no i know no no i know no no you totally you didn't <laughs> oh yeah who could who could find the books entertaining oh god oh anyway so uh yeah so that to be actually like honestly serious and not give it's just a mountain of shit <laughs> uh <laughs> it's you want to experience the setting and learn more about the setting organically through your character's eyes yes yes yep cool um good we can absolutely do that yeah uh it will be a very specific perspective on the world of darkness yeah through your character's eyes and through the eyes of like the uh, other players and stuff like that um but i think that's a that's a good and noble goal mm -hmm. uh because i know you know when you went into series one uh, this wasn't exactly your jam. And I do remember from the Q&A, uh, you're like, you know, I don't, not, I'm not, vampires aren't my thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, 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 I disagreed. Uh, I just don't know, because you like Darkest Dungeon, mm -hmm. Bloodborne, yeah. Dark Souls, like the games that, are, like, they have an incredibly rich lore and are challenging. Uh, we can make this similar for you, I believe. Okay. Uh, and I personally... <laughs> yeah that's a good challenge like for me to find out how how this game can hook you yeah yeah yep 
the very specific attachment points that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a couple of ideas because mm -hmm. I've had a year to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, seriously, like, thanks for just kind of being game mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. anything and, and being down for this because I, I, Oliver's fucking inspired. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's great. Um, and I'm glad that you can find things to enjoy about it and have put yourself in there with such gusto. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I did do that. Uh, well, I'm glad you don't like self-esteem. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Uh, I mean, we've, we've cleared this before just between you and I, but physical touching during scenes. How, how's everybody okay, okay with that? Might be awkward with the There's microphones. a lot of microphones, but... Well, I, yeah, I so long you don't slap a mic. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. You know what I mean, you <laughs> jackasses. But yeah, is that okay if that's part of scenes, like as a, you know, like mm. reassurance mm. between NPCs and I, whatnot? Can I say yes now and no later if I've Always. Changed? Yeah. Always. Then 100%. Because one mm -hmm. day you might wake up and just be like, I don't want anybody to touch me, but I want to play some vampire. Totally good. You okay. can let us know beforehand. You can let us know, like, in the thing. Uh... You like within the scene, like if I'm reaching for you or something like that, if I'm like, quick, let's switch seats. Um, <laughs> let's not, because we'll just fuck everything up. Uh, but just, you know, if, if I'm close mm -hmm. to you and like, you know, there's a scene going on between Oliver and, and somebody else or like, like, I don't know, some hot veterinarian because he needs to eat and there's a bunch of bunnies in that room back there. <laughs> um, you know, is that cool with you if like, yeah. I actually reach out and touch you? Yeah. Okay, cool. Excellent. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Cool. Just mm -hmm. want to make sure that everybody, mm -hmm. you can absolutely say yes now and then change your mind at any time for no reason. You don't owe anybody here at this table or anybody out there in the internet an explanation for your boundaries. It is up to you what your boundaries are mm -hmm. and what you keep in your life. Okay. Not up to anybody else. All right. Cool. Excellent. Uh, good. What was I saying before that? I forgot. What do people want out of the game? Thanks. Hmm. Adam, who would you like that question to be asked to next? Cameron. Cameron, what do you uh, want out of the game as a player? I've set Silas up as someone who, with a deep connection to humanity, and I would like to see what happens when that begins to fray and what kind of decisions he begins to make when you start really spending decades or years even thinking of humans as food. Yeah. All right. I think we can accommodate, I dare right. say. And once you're, you know, you're an immortal and he's, he's, he's definitely like internalized that. He's trying to think a lot about that, mm -hmm. about, you know, what's going to happen in a thousand years or 10,000 years, because I'm still going to be around. He's absolutely still going to be alive in that amount of time. But every other vampire in this world doesn't think on those terms and maybe that's just something that happens to you right like you like your planning horizon just shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and shrinks until you're like well until you're a monster <laughs> right like yeah. yeah okay i like the <laughs> karen's like what if humans were food and what happens <laughs> if we spend our entire lives consuming them and i'm just like is Bigfoot real? <laughs> <laughs> Is he real? You gotta tell me if he's real. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just found, uh, I just found that funny. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> so Cameron, who would you like that question be asked to next? I would love to hear Heather's thoughts on this. Well, this is the first game I've played that's gone beyond one session of anything tabletop. Neat. Uh, so really, I just want to keep having a good time. I want to explore the setting, mm. uh, learn more about it. Okay. That's, that's really kind of my, my, my biggest goal ever. Yeah. Cool. We can do that. Who would you like that, uh, question to be asked to next? That's a tough question, right? <laughs> Corey. Ah, well, uh, at the end of the last game, session three, uh, my the gears were all spinning and we ended and I just kind of put it in park and I would like to just pick up and I'm like what happens next 
Okay. That's, that's mostly what I want. Mm-hmm. I want to like grow, flesh out the character, yeah. have experiences, have unexpected things happen, like accidentally crashing my van several times into a werewolf. <laughs> you want more werewolf crashing? <laughs> well, I want things of that nature, things that are unexpected. Like, mm. That was certainly unexpected. That was very unexpected. True. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, as for me, I want to have a good time with my friends. I want to sh- continue to be able to show you this thing that I love so much. Um, and I want to be able to provide for you a safe environment mm-hmm. where you can explore some things that you might not otherwise. Um, and it doesn't have to be, what does it mean to be a monster? It doesn't necessarily have to be even be one of the themes to Vampire, Beast, I Am, Less Beast, I Become. Uh it could be what happens if I fight against that with everything I have as far as the character goes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And I'd like to give you the freedom to be as silly, stupid, or dramatic as you so choose. Because the city is there and Vancouver Island is there waiting for you. You are, in a very real sense, the most important people on this island. That's pretty exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, finally, validation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nobody else on the island thinks that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is in a meta sense. Everybody else is going to be like, you are scum. <laughs> uh, so, I do want to go over a couple of uh, rules changes from last time. Now, uh, you've got rules primers, and we, you know, we will go through and actually, you know, I'll explain rules that you may have forgotten or may have slipped your mind or anything, because I actually do have them all locked in here. You've got some information uh, on that as well. Um, And I would like to experience some of that through play. But some of the, uh, since we played last time and to this time, there's going to be a couple of different ways that I want to run the table. And I want to see if everybody's down with that, okay? Mm -hmm. That are a little bit different. Okay. Now, one of the things, I'm going to touch on this one right up at the top. Messy criticals. Because, boy, I have never seen so many in such a short amount of time with such a group. (laughs) And the way that I described messy criticals last time, messy Mm -hmm. criticals, just to remind, is uh, you have your regular dice and your hunger dice. You roll as many hunger as from one to five. And you add that to your, you add a hunger dice to your dice pool. Not in addition to, but you swap one of them out for your hunger dice, depending on how hungry your character is. Various things can happen. One of those things being a messy critical. Criticals are when you roll two tens. If you roll a 10 on one hunger dice and a 10 on a regular dice or a 10 on two hunger dice, that's called a messy critical. And the way that I described it last time is you do the thing that you wanted to do, but the beast does it for you. And that's going to be one of the many options. One of the uh, things that the errata suggests is your clan compulsion activates Mm -hmm. and a couple of different things that can happen. I think that's a great idea. Beautiful idea. A wonderful idea. I want to take that a step further because a friend of mine, uh, Meredith Gerber, uh, I had her in in my home game as a guest, uh, storyteller. I played some of the uh, SPCs and took my two characters to Chicago. She did. She introduced a great rule for Messy Criticals that I'm going to borrow with her permission because she's fantastic and generous and lovely. What's up? Messy Criticals. When a Messy Critical comes up, everybody at the table gets to suggest one thing that happens. And then we vote on it. Hmm. And then that's the thing that happens. It could be your clan compulsion activates because I'd like to... uh, put forward that idea because each clan is different has their own flavor and their own banes you know this thing in their blood that you don't have to worry about this pumpkin Mm -hmm. um (laughs) uh, this thing in their blood that runs back generations upon generations of vampires and helps to define what the clan is not you so i would like to bring that to the fore uh just a little bit more because that's what makes everybody kind of distinct and special and part of something that goes back generations and ages. Not for you, buddy. Okay. So. All right. Sometimes the inside thought can stay inside, but hey. 
<laughs> you can just you don't have to say everything out loud. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Yeah. Uh so um uh Kaitif obviously are are kind of exempt from a lot of this because they don't have a clan, but mm. they also get unpredictable powers and uh the general loathing of uh kindred society. Uh you're beautiful and special and I love you. Um nobody nobody else is going to though. That's fair. Yeah. Sorry, man. That's okay. It's gonna be a great game. <laughs> so that's how see crit criticals are gonna work. Uh is uh when I had mentioned this at the uh the end of the Q and A, I believe, and uh that's that's what we're gonna do. Mess criticals. So the other rule, uh bestial failures. Bestial failures uh usually are like you mess up so bad and then bad things happen and that happens when you roll uh a one on your hunger dice and then you get no successes on any other dice and we're gonna do the same thing for a bestial failure bestial failure is you frenzy you just something messes up and it is only limited by your imagination. You can throw out whatever you want. It's just for the scene. It's not necessarily, the role doesn't necessarily, a bestial failure or a master critical doesn't necessarily mean it happens to your character. It just means it happens based on the action or in the scene. Mm. And it could be a bunch of different things. So we're going to try those out. Uh, we're going to leave it up to the table and you can all suggest. Now with the bestial failure, messy critical, we all vote. What do we want to have happen? Messy critical. Yeah, it's a success, but it's kind of messed up and twisted. It doesn't happen exactly in the way that you want fantastic or it happens at a cost whoop muzzle hmm. and then we'll vote on that best show failures however everybody makes a suggestion and then i pick is everybody okay with that yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay all right next thing y'all remember the difference between jacob and jackson yeah uh, one has an X in the name and the other one doesn't. That is very correct. Mm -hmm. That is very true. Mm -hmm. One's out to ruin our day. Jacob's my friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Uh, uh, Jaxup no. is not your friend, but not your enemy. Correct. Thank you. No, I am not out to ruin your day. This is not an antagonistic relationship from any... I thought Jackson was out to ruin our day. No. Oh. No. Jackson doesn't give a shit about anybody at this table. Oh, okay. Jackson cares about the city and how the game works. Okay. Mm. Jackson is the one that runs the town. He's the one that kind of keeps everything going because this is a living city sort of style and setting. That's how I run my games mm -hmm. is I have the city set up. I have how Vancouver Island is going to work. Every SPC that you meet has their own motivations, uh, has their own activities and has their own actions when you can't see them just because they're not around you and you can't perceive them. They still have a full and rich life that is connected to everything else. Mm -hmm. I love running games like this because if you never came to Vancouver Island, Jackson would just be like, I'm watching the clockwork go. Yay. Mm. Everything is happening. And this person goes here and this person goes here and this is what happens. And this, blah, 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 and it's great and yay and lovely. And then Jacob decides he's going to run a game with his friends. They all make characters. And he just throws four wrenches into that clockwork just to see what happens. Jacob wants to see you succeed as players. I want you to have all of your goals. I want you to achieve things. And I will... You can always ask me for suggestions or advice or be like, man, I don't know, what, what should I do here? Please go to your players. But if you're ever just like, hey, Jacob, I call it the you do it rule. Jacob, you do it. You don't want to describe something your player's doing? We'll just make the role and just be like, Jacob, you describe it. That's totally cool. You're going to come first. You have premacy. Absolutely. So I'm going to change that a little bit. I'm going to give you a lot more control over the description of this game. But you never have to feel like you're on the spot. My job as a facilitator, as your storyteller, is to make sure that you have a good time and we all tell the story together. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jacksub's not your enemy. Jacksub is not your friend. Jacksub just wants the game to go. Clear? Any questions on that? Sounds no? good. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, another house rule. The cube. This is something that some of my home game players came up with because I was uh, taking... <laughs> I was taking little things that they had mentioned and said and not forgetting them <laughs> and making sure that they went into the game. Now, 
It's something uh, uh, another storyteller friend of ours does. Dale. Mm -hmm. He's very good at it. He's excellent at it. I want you to have what you want. Jackson wants you to have what you want, but not always in the way that you want it. So we have the cube. The cube, it's about this big, and it howls and screams with the wishes and dreams of players past. And you can put things in that cube, mm -hmm. and Jackson can't get to them. Okay. Neither can Jacob. So if you say something offhanded as a funny joke, hey, wouldn't it be funny if blah, 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 and you don't put that in the cube, I will have heard you. I will remember. <laughs> I will put it in the game. I will sometimes ask you if you want to put that in the cube. <laughs> you have one opportunity to do so, mm -hmm. and it is the moment that I ask that. Yeah. The next thing that you ought to say is, yes, I would like to put that in the cube. <laughs> Oh, I never want to put anything in the cube. Great. Then never do it. Yep. So, is everybody okay with that? It yes. is the. It is the. <laughs> I check for traps. Uh, I will ask you. I'm not going to try to use it against you. This isn't a gotcha. I want to make that very clear. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would like there to be a little tension and trepidation mm -hmm. uh, surrounding uh, surrounding joke em ups. Because something I very much enjoy doing, something that we're all going to do with each other is something that uh, my, again, my home players have coined this phrase, rumple skinning it, <clears throat> which is turning all of the straw that you put out there and weaving it into gold. Hmm. I love taking dumb ideas <laughs> and making them real, but then weaving them into the game and the story. Yeah. Like the dumbest idea. Like I thought of about three different ways that you could legitimately in a very real high tension sort of high stakes way drive the Oscar Mayer hot dog wiener car. Mm. That would be something that I would offer. Do you want to put that in the cube? Yeah. Okay. Oscar Mayer hot dog wiener car goes in the cube. So. Oh wait, you were asking me if I wanted to put the. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were just like making, no, I don't want to put the Oscar, Oscar Mayer. Mayer. Okay. <laughs> I'm not saying it's going to come up. Yeah, I know. But I figured some ways to actually make it relevant. I decision. Corey looked at me like I shot her. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, was like what are you, you? I don't have any agency in this. <laughs> the Oscar Mayer burrito wagon. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something that I, I really adore and love doing. You know how there's a lot of people that are just like, oh, you make everything into a joke? It's the opposite of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you said Rumble Stilts can you know, it's yeah. like, are we baby stealing? Like Oh, that's later. We're right. not stealing, it's borrowing. Negotiating. With yeah, babies it's are a, currency. It's a, it's a contract yeah. that that they sign. Yeah, babies are currency. Yeah. Okay. Look, I've watched a lot of Once Upon a Time. He always has a contract. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's the moral of his story is always pay attention to the contract. Yeah. But again, this isn't a gotcha. Don't worry. It, it's totally fine. I, it's, I'm... I, I also thought he was just providing an example. I wasn't. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, I'm just want to make sure. And good. I'm glad we, we cleared all that up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I want us all to be able to do that. You know, turn any silly thing and be like you know what yeah let's let's turn that stupid joke that we just had into something actually real and make it manifest um because boy narratively for me that's incredibly satisfying mm. but it's also sometimes a huge pain in the ass because it's like dude i just wanted to make a joke you didn't have to make this so serious <laughs> oh my god why yeah i put up wander posters for werewolves <laughs> like like six city blocks and like cube <laughs> yeah 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 no, yeah i yeah, yeah. want to do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> you want to cube that yeah of course i want to do that i was just joking what is wrong with you jacob <laughs> jesus uh because so uh, as far as like wanted posters for werewolves and things mm -hmm. then uh uh let me give you an example okay okay I want to put up wanted posters for werewolves within six city blocks. Mm -hmm. You don't know who your sire is. Yeah. So I would want to put, for example, a story of your sire's sire. At some point, let's say you're running into this. This is a hypothetical, by the way. Okay. Just completely. Um, because uh, there were, in fact, werewolves here during the gold rush. And your sire's sire, before they... Uh, sire, 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 excuse me. Uh, great grandsire before they Peepaw. were a vampire yeah people before they were a vampire 
um, before they were a vampire, was actually a sheriff here in the town. Yeah. And uh, tried to catch the uh, Barnum boys. The Barnum boys, like, you can find some of their wanted posters in antique shops because there were posters all up around town. Mm-hmm. Absolutely everywhere. And your peepaw <laughs> did his absolute best to catch them, but never could. Yeah. And during one fight, they took your peepaw's sheriff star. Yeah. Broke it in half. And the descendants of the Barnum boys have one half. And as you were going through some of your old trophies from high school, you found the other. Hmm. So that's, for example, how I turn a stupid joke into something probably way too fucking serious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about, Rumpelstiltskin it, and, and I guess we're... No, don't say that, Jacob. Uh, <laughs> reversing, turning everything into a joke uh, and making it serious. But I want all of us to be able to like participate in that. Uh, mm-hmm. And you can also be like, that was a great story, Jacob. Cube it. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Fucking calm down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. You're up here at a nine. We need you down here. Just like what's a six look like, dude? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. We, and we demanded tens. I, I I'm I'd like to correct you on that. You demanded a ten. Yes. So uh how about we get into I don't remember who the other one was, okay. Yeah, you know, I should have I should have remembered that. So at the end of the Q and A, all that time ago, uh we had kind of sort of introduced uh, a number scale to what people were comfortable with. Um, And I try to give examples, but everybody's kind of different with where your boundaries are um, because some people's tens or other people's fives as far as, you know, the emotional energy and uh, intensity and things go. Um, And this is kind of, this is a question both for your character, like you as a player and kind of you as a performer as well. and how much intensity you want and where you want to go in this as far as emotionally goes. Cause I don't want to introduce some story about like, you know, your ex-girlfriend who comes back into town or ex-boyfriend or ex-partner uh, who comes back into town and kind of gets somehow wrapped up in vampire politics. Um, you know, that's a cool story and there's a couple of different ways you can play it, but how intense do you want that to be? How much do you want to engage with that? How much uh, do you want, how much emotion do you, are you comfortable displaying on camera? Cause you can actually say like, I want my character to just go through hell, hell. But again, same thing with like lines and veils, you know, what you want for your character doesn't necessarily have to be what you want to experience. Does that make sense with mm. the kind of differentiation between the two? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because we can absolutely play out some incredibly emotional scenes, and I'll be right there with you as your scene partner. We can do that as a coterie, as a group, um, and just, you know, this is just another kind of setting our boundaries and where we're at. So kind of just in a general broad sense, we don't have to put a number on it or anything, because, again, a lot of that is subjective. But mm-hmm. where do you want to go? Like, what do you want to explore? You know, you can give me examples um, of kind of where you're comfortable going emotionally with this game. Tough question, right? Yeah. yeah. That's a tough yeah. One. I have no idea. I can't, I don't even think I can answer it. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I'm pretty okay with everything. And I mean like the, the, the X is there for a reason. Uh-huh. Right. So I think that, uh, I'm more of along the lines of as far as like emotional investment goes mm-hmm. and try stuff out. And if it, if I have to exit, then I'll have to exit. Okay. Like, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not, I have no idea. I okay. don't know. Yeah. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fair. Um, And again, we're, we're going to try to play it safe. And, and if I feel like, you know, something's coming up or something might be cool, like, you know, take it up into high drama level. I'll just ask you mm-hmm. like, Hey, this character, you know, I, I, uh, I think we're going to take this character in a, uh, you know, different direction. It could just be a little sweet check-in or something like that. Like, are you okay if this person lo- like yells at you? Mm-hmm. Or do you want it more like just the seething anger? Like, you know, pretty much, are you okay if this person yells at you? Because some people can't and don't want to be yelled yeah, at. Mm-hmm. Like at all. Because there's a difference between like the character actually being like, you motherfucker, you can ruin my life, blah, 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 blah. But obviously I would actually yell. 
and just describing it of like, you know, this person yells at you and details how you've ruined their life by taking away their favorite chihuahua, for example. Uh, you know, obviously I could go into longer descriptions or shorter descriptions for greater or lesser emotional impact. Mm -hmm. um, but like, you know, again, where do you want to go? Are you okay with that? Yeah. Um, we're going to kind of, we'll work together and we'll kind of play it by ear as we're going yeah. um, and work that out. Uh, outside of the game, obviously if you, you're like, yeah, I'm not cool with this. Like, I don't want to see you cry mm -hmm. as a character. Because, like, it's different watching a character cry and an actor cry on the screen. It's different if I'm the one sitting right here locking eyes with you doing it. You know, some people are, are cool with that. Some people aren't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm okay with stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. But again, like... Yeah, you don't... It's all, it's all in, the, in the moment kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Yep. That's totally cool. And we'll play it... We'll, we'll just kind of play it by ear. And mm -hmm. again, us, you know, what the X card is for, we can absolutely call it back. And you can just be like you know, hard stop, hard no, I need to step out. You know, I just want to make sure that everybody's having a good time and there's no surprises. Mm -hmm. You know, that we're going to places we want to go and nowhere else. Yeah. I draw the line at tears. What's that? I draw the line at tears. Uh, uh, your tears or my tears? My tears. Your tears? So... If you make me cry on camera, I will leave. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, that is, that is, and that's a that's a personal choice of I I don't like publicly... Yeah, I'm crying. I'm not gonna. I wouldn't. Yeah, I would do that without your express no, permission. No, sure. Yeah, but that's that's mm -hmm. where my line yep. lives. Yeah, that's totally cool. Yeah, you meant like as a general you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I want to just want to make sure, but we're good. Okay. So you don't want to actually cry. So uh, if it does get into uh, anything emotional, um, now just because there's some nuance there, may I ask mm -hmm. some questions? Sure. Okay. Make you cry on camera as your character or because, like, for example, some other people have different boundaries and things, and you are here at the table witnessing other stuff that you may be emotionally invested in. Um, like, for example, if if Oliver and Silas have a very emotional scene, and mm -hmm. that brings up tears with you, or that kind of feeling. How, how's that go? Maybe. I'm, okay. I might be fine with that. Okay, cool. And again, we can absolutely... Put the camera over here. Yeah. And you can just leave. Yeah, I'm I'm good with that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's totally fine. I think I think we're okay with that too. Okay. I just want to make sure that like ha things happening to you because things are still happening around you as well. Mm, yeah. I I think I'm more okay with things happening around me. Yeah, I get it. Because it's not then the focus isn't on me. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. So, uh, all right. Excellent. And we'll okay. we'll negotiate that. Uh, no big tearful goodbyes between, you know, you holding a loved one while they pass or anything like that. We can just describe it in, yeah. you yeah. know, broader terms. I don't, don't mind being sad. I just really yeah. don't. My, my tears are my own. Yeah. I And that is a fine, fine fucking boundary. And very well put, too. <laughs> very well put. Um, okay. Then we're going to watch that. Uh, I may develop some signals with you. Okay. Uh, outside of the game just to make sure that we're like I'm not you know if I'm getting close like there's another safety rule actually called uh, 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 green yellow red okay so red is hard stop everybody stop 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 uh, yellow is like hey you're getting close to this thing that I don't want to do or like so like let's pull it back and kind of go sure. and that's hmm. it's really good in improv too because then you can kind of like shift the scene hmm. into a different direction um but again, we do have the benefit of the magic of the internet and pre-recording. Um, cool. So I might want to develop a, a system of signals with you to make sure, okay. uh, especially if you do want to have emotional scenes, you just don't want to get that far. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, and everybody's good with that, especially if it's emotional scenes between everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, displays of anger. How's everybody doing with that? I'm fine. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because again, I, I'm I'm saying this too. Uh, I understand and recognize that I am an intense person, uh, and um, I don't know if anybody here has seen me do dramatic performance. And just like I'm just a naturally, I'm just an intense person. It's just part of who I am. It, it's not. I don't see it as a positive or a negative. It's just 
part of who I am and I, I, I sometimes wish I could be different, but I'm not. And I have to be very aware how I can affect other people, especially when they're trusting me to run a game like this. Mm -hmm. And when they tell me I want to go to other emotional places, I got to be very careful that mm -hmm. I'm not taking it too far uh, or doing anything that's just like somebody that was important in my life talked to me like that once and that kind of bucked me up. Like that's why we have mm. safety, you know, safety rules and mechanics when we talk about stuff like this. Um, and we do this as part of session zero too for the benefit of folks out there. Um, cool. All right. So displays of anger are fine. Yelling. I think so. Generally. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. think so. Again, that's what the X card and everything is for. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. if you yell, I might cry, and that might not be emotionally appropriate for my character, mm -hmm. but I might just take a moment to recover, and it'll be fine. Okay, cool, cool. And again, I just want to make sure that I'm doing yeah. this with your consent and permission. Mm. Uh, and and that goes for each other, too. That's not just like, ah, fuck me up, Jacob, yay! Like, that's, that's also, we're mm. giving each other permission to go to those places mm -hmm. uh, with each other as well. Again, you know, that we have safety rules and things in place. Yeah. Okay? And we all trust each other not to uh, be edgelords about it. Cool. Excellent. I just think that's a good... Edgelord is a good little encapsulating term for the type of player none of us want to be. Yeah. Mm. Cool. All right. Excellent. All right. Uh, so that's... I mean... What is a 10 to you? Because at the end of... Uh, at the end of the Q&A, mm -hmm. Corey, you had said, like, I'm cool, like, at a 10. Like, can you... You don't have to go, like, what's a 10? You can be like, I think this would be about an 8. Like, I think the example you gave was just kind of, like, uh, full-on weeping. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Like, if I can feel emotionally connected enough with my character to emote, that would be a lot. Okay. That would be that would be cool. Okay. That's, like, a thing that I would like. Okay. All right. Um... I we help you get there. What do y'all think? Yeah. 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 They'll feel the same way. Yeah. Cool. All right. Excellent. Uh, you two just seem down to clown. If you could make around. me cry, I would be intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> now, ah. I want to be very clear here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make you cry. No, you, my character. Yep. yep. Yeah. Just wanna, in the role. Yep. Yeah. Uh, As the. Uh, like, I'm sure you could make me cry, like, basically on 30 seconds notice because I'm <laughs> weak. And I... <laughs> no, we can't. No, you're definitely not, man. Shut up. Uh, yeah. But, like, yeah, if I can feel, as Corey put it, the emotional resonance with my character mm -hmm. yeah. that puts me into a vulnerable mm -hmm. space, I think that would be an interesting uh, dramatic role to experience because I'm mainly an internet clown. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. If you can make me care about Oliver enough to cry at IRL, mm -hmm. um, shout outs to you, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Because I want to make sure, because the part of my brain when I hear things like that mm -hmm. is, that sounds like a challenge. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, right. Not, yes. not, okay. Not in a, not in a like, ha <laughs> ha, oh, I'm going to fuck him up way, but in a like, I want to give this to you mm -hmm. and I want to do my best to try. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is not necessarily something that I sat down in this chair to experience. If the game naturally develops in that way, that is that is cool and Thank interesting. You for communicating. It's not exactly what I sat down to vampire to experience. Mm -hmm. Is not love that movie. <laughs> <gasps> I didn't come here for catharsis. <laughs> if it happens, cool. Um yep. if it I, I mainly wanted to like blood sorcery things. Yeah. But catharsis would be an interesting side effect of a rule set interacting with an emotional uh, environment. Okay. Or landscape. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want to put the boundary out here? Don't have to hit it. Yeah. Okay. Good. It's just you're all you're doing is you're defining the space in which we can play. Yeah. And if we never kind of go to that undiscovered country mm -hmm. uh, that's there, totally cool. But you're mm -hmm. just defining the boundaries in the space in which we play. Mm -hmm. perfect same with you yeah like i'm okay with feeling uncomfortable but don't feel like you have failed as a storyteller oh, no, 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 you no, know no. what i mean like i'm just trying to let i'm just letting you know yep. that if i do not if you do not elicit a strong emotional reaction from me at any point uh -huh. then it's not a failure yeah that doesn't mean i'm enjoying myself any less i okay. believe me yeah i understand i know 
Uh, but I figure it's good to say it out loud. Yeah, it absolutely is. Because... Yeah, like Cameron, I didn't sit down here being like, man, I hope I get real attached to Oliver and yeah. bad things happen to him and I feel bad, but then he pulls through or whatever. Uh-huh. He doesn't pull through. That's not what I, I yeah. did. So. I, w- I would love all of you to be able to be emotionally attached to your characters in a healthy way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 In, in a healthy way, in a healthy environment. Yes. Um, because, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of us are internet clowns. Like, mm-hmm. Just straight up. Uh, and I want to be able to give us the opportunity to uh, to do that in an entertaining and safe way for all of us. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Hopefully. If you make me cry and it turns into a gift set... However, <laughs> yeah, right. That's yeah, that, them. That would yeah be, that's yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's less Jacob. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know how to make a gif, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I Man, I should learn how to make a gif. Actually, yeah. Anyway, um, let me just check check my little list. I want to make sure that I'm I'm hitting all points and we're all firing on all cylinders here. Uh. All right. So those are kind of the limits on intensity, Mm -hmm. you know, and we can discuss again a little bit more out of game and stuff, too. All right. Um, But that doesn't mean that the game is going to be serious Mm -hmm. because you all don't want like all serious all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. no. Yeah. Right. Again, we're Internet clowns. I don't think we can. Like, no, I guarantee not... you I cannot. Yeah, no. I'm I can't. telling you right now. I, I want yeah. some highs and lows. Yeah, yeah of course. I, I cannot. Yeah. yeah. I can't take it seriously all the time. No, yeah. dude, there's going to yeah. be... Look, this is one of the things I love most in the world. And there's some things that I see and sometimes I'm just like, this is... this is. I love this thing. Mm-hmm. This thing is dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just tabletop games in general. What we're doing right now, if you look at it and you kind of zoom out a little bit, I, well, don't do it too much. <laughs> don't do it too much. Not too far. Not too far. Not too far. Too far. Too far. Too far. But yeah, what I've we're wasted my yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder my parents don't understand. <laughs> uh, yeah, but what we're doing is inherently stupid, and you need to be able to recognize that. It doesn't mean you'd love it any less. Mm-hmm. But like, come on. We're all going to pretend to be vampires. Yeah. This is silly. Yeah. That's good. That's excellent because you can take it very seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or not. It can be the game that you want it to be. And Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that we run the game that we want to run and experience the things that we want to experience. That's my job as a facilitator. And I won't, thank you very much, by the way, for communicating. I will not feel like a failure as a storyteller if uh, we're not able to achieve that because there is a million reasons why that might not be the case. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm a try. Yeah. Yeah. Because you said that there was only, uh, Cameron, one one game you've ever played in that you wrote fan fiction about. Yeah. I'm going to make that too. All right. Uh, that's a goal for me. <laughs> mm. That's a goal for me. I won't feel like mm. I failed if you don't. But I want to give you an experience so good and so pure Maybe not pure. Pure, but like <laughs> memorable? Oh, 100%. Yeah. My goal as a storyteller is to get you to think about the game outside of us sitting at this table. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's my goal as a storyteller. Not obsessively. Absolutely not. But as you go around town, every once in a while, because we are playing in the city that we all live in, on the island that we all live on, I would like you, every once in a while, what I would love for to happen is for you to look at like a building and be like, we drove through that with a car. (laughs) Things like that. Mm -hmm. And just be like, that was a good time. Or uh, if it's the kind of game that you want, thinking about the game outside of the game of like, I wonder what this person meant by that. Who is this person? Oh, what was that? Oh man, and just be able to like you know just kick it around in the back of your head. It's it's it. All it is is just silly fun times to occupy your brain because everything in the game that I'm going to run for you is connected. Mm-hmm. There is a reason for everything that happens in the game. Whether you don't have to try to notice every little detail, and that's fine. That's not what the game is going to be about. But if you want to explore those details, I want to make sure that they're there for you. Because if somebody just magically shows up and it seems like a little bit early or something, like, you know, bust into a room and being like, ah, 
I thought maybe I find you here. How did they know you were there? Because I'm going to do my best to give everybody a reason for everything that they do. Because mm -hmm. I want you to be able to engage with the game as much or as little as you want. Emotionally, mentally, or otherwise. And I also want to give Chad something to do. Yeah. Actually, I don't need to give Chad anything to do. They're going to do... They, 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 they're they really good at finding things to do. Yeah. We're giving Chad something yeah. to do right now. That's true. Hey, go us. Yeah. yeah. All right. Ooh. All right. Yeah, we're fantastic. <laughs> Beautiful. So to kind of bring this session zero to a close, we've talked about a lot. We've kind of reviewed the game. We have gone over lines and veils, X cards, safety rules, uh, talked a little bit more and a little deeper about uh, where our boundaries are, talked about our characters, um, talked about where we want the game to go and what kind of a game we want uh, a little bit here and a little bit outside of the game. Is there anything that we haven't covered that anybody would like to say or bring up? At this point, mm -hmm. I have my hands in my pockets, not because I'm trying to be super casual, but because my hands are cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. No? No. Okay. Not for me anyway. I'm All right. I speak for the whole table, but. Okay. I can't think of anything right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm real jazzed. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Well, fantastic. So last question, because I am 110% cool with you just kind of asking for stuff. Is there anything that you want in this series? Allure of Flames. <laughs> yeah? No. I mean... You want to... <laughs> like, just the entire monkey's fist curls shot. Uh, you want to... You want to cube dad there, buddy? I'll do it. I don't know what you're asking for, but it's... <laughs> yeah, I'll explain like, that in a second. Just ask for the vampire equivalent of a deck of many things. Oh. Uh, so Lure of Flames yeah. is, uh, so in previous editions, yeah. Thaumaturgy had a bunch of different paths mm -hmm. that you could get. Uh, a lot of those paths became rituals and Thaumaturgy, uh, which is what the Tremere call blood magic, mm -hmm. became blood sorcery and kind of uh, incorporate and works similar to uh, other mm -hmm. discipline powers, except with blood sorcery, you can get rituals, which usually take longer to cast. They have like different ranks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some people guard their rituals very jealously. Uh, and there was one in previous editions, a path that became rituals called lures of lure of flames, which is, you know, vampires are weak and afraid of fire. Mm -hmm. The th thaumaturgists, the Tremere, because they're full of bright ideas and have done no wrong ever. <laughs> <laughs> they're perfect and golden and lovely, uh, figured out how to use blood magic to make fire. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's what, uh, Cameron is, uh, just yelled out was lure of flames i'd like to be able to use fire mm. oh that sounds uh, amazing it was broken broken it was <laughs> flat out editions, broken yes. it was not actually a good idea to have in the game um but we're talking from like a meta standpoint like an it outside. was incredibly destructive and powerful and like just so cool um Hell let's yeah, let's it. let's cue let's just, you want to half cube it? <laughs> the fact you that it's half cube something. Well, I'm, 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 I think I'm, I think I'm, I can square something. I think yeah. I'm, I think I'm inventing this as we're talking. We're gonna half cube it. Like, do you want to? Do you want to decide later? You yeah. Put a pin in that? Yeah. Let's All put right. a pin on because in there that. are there are some rituals now that you could get. To... Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So well, like it's okay. It would ruin Silas's life. Yeah. Yeah. Would it, it ruin my life? Probably, I'm, yeah. I, it's, I, it would be a kind it, of. Th it would be a, a no. It would be a game warping thing. Not necessarily. Oh no, no. I don't think so. Hmm. Not because. Yeah. Let's let's put a pin in that. Okay. Does that sound all right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like how dangerous just it sounds. Pivot now to I the key. Right. Yeah. yeah. We'll you put, can't just say that. You can't be like, yeah, the, you know. It, the forbidden right, and then you're like, "What's the forbidden right?" I'm like, "Well, we don't talk about it because it's too much fun. It's because <laughs> yeah. it's too awesome, yeah. basically. It's what, too great. What it is is that it's going to take the game over, and we're basically going to go to space. Yeah. And, and, like, I I would make sure it doesn't take the game over, yeah. uh, because if you want lure of flames, that means you've got to find somebody to learn it from. Yes, and it's that's like, a whole story. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, that just sounds really cool. It it honestly is kind of sweet, um, but it's also like the power fantasy thing. And I'm not sure that's really where Silas goes. 
if that's where you want to go. It doesn't operate in the same way in V5. And it's rituals. They're not, it's mm-hmm. not. Or it's it's not like fireball. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're not just like the lint in your pocket. Whoop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or wall of flame. Which was one of the abilities. True. Yeah. Just be like, yeah, fire. Huh. And then they'd run because they were affected the same way. It didn't make them immune to the to the frenzy. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. It didn't make them immune to anything. They were just like, la, 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 la. And then, yeah. Mm. And they just like crawl up the walls and stuff. Wow. Yep. Bunch of dumbasses. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's man. basically, man, I see you're familiar with Clan and House Tremere. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just... No, you got it. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah you got yeah. it. No, you, you, you got it. Yeah. Yeah, they're called the usurpers for a reason. Yeah. They seem nice, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, is there anything else uh, people want in the game? Like, up to and including, like, I'd like to learn about the Tremere in the game. Because they all, they make the best decisions. Yeah. Yeah, I no, anyway. So. I mean, I just want to learn. I don't have anything specific, right? Okay. Because like, I don't know anything about it. So it's just like, well, you, you could I mean? literally tell me things like pet dog, one drive car, car chase. I mean, she asked for a van oh, chase. Yeah. We threw that in. And that it went great. Pe- and it went, no, yeah. It went yeah. Flawless. It was great. Yeah. Everything I wanted. I, wouldn't mind, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming there's going to be more werewolves, but I would like more werewolves. You would like more werewolves? Yeah. Mm. Everybody, okay. I assumed that I would happen. I assumed there like, was going to happen. Yeah, I assumed there was going to be fallout and consequences. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have we'll have more lupines. Yeah, for for rumbling, th- for wrecking three werewolves motorbikes yeah. at the very least. Yeah. I'd yeah. also want to find out why they're so mad at us. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I mean, that, Oliver. Does. That, that's Oliver's a question. Like, I don't Oliver know why they're so mad all the time. I'm. I mean, we could share with you our in-universe understanding of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But would you like an opportunity in the game to find out more about that? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Oliver's curious. Would you like to leave it up to me how that happens? Yeah, yeah, sure. Fill your boots. Would anybody like to guide me or cube that? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to cube. No, no. We're going we're gonna... <laughs> to... Interview with a vampire, conversation with a werewolf. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Actually, yeah. If you want to have the no exit um, uh, episode where it's just like two players on a stage talking at each other or two characters on a stage. I don't know what no exit is. I'm sorry. Oh, it was it was a Sartre play, but it was also an episode of Battlestar Galactica. Oh, Which was yes. kind of like okay, the, um, one of the lore dump episodes, but it was essentially two characters on a stage, like mm-hmm. ultra minimal theater. Oh, neat. Look. Yeah. Neat. Uh, I don't... Having an argument. Doing a lower dump episode seems, for me, very self-indulgent. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but it was just the... I don't think i the... like that. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, where it's just like, I ask a thing and then you spend like an hour explaining to me. Like, oh, it wouldn't know. be an... I'd be an hour. <laughs> I just feel like somehow he's made like a uh, pen pal who then turns out to be a werewolf. I... <laughs> That'd be sick. <laughs> You want a cube? Back? I didn't say, I didn't say shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. Uh, delicious. Uh, would anybody else with a, a sense of self-preservation? Like <laughs> <laughs> you oh. know, I know you probably haven't watched it, but I've been watching Ted Lasso. And oh, I've seen all a, of it. Yeah. Okay. There's the storyline in season two. I haven't finished season two yet, but the the boss and uh, Sam when they text each other through the dating app. Yeah. Like that, but with a werewolf. <laughs> But neither of us know oh. that the other one. Yes. <laughs> oh man, I just want to watch all that go down. Yeah. Can 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 Jessica yeah. help you with learn the dating app? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean. Oh yeah. Oliver Write your know, profile. Oliver legitimately has a trait that means he can't use technology. So. Oh, I'm going to help you make a dating profile. <laughs> he can't. He, just, he doesn't have any. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh. Oh, man. You okay over there, Jacob? Yeah, okay. I just saw the face of God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that oh. what that is? Oh, yeah. this is going to be a good time. Yeah. Well. Thank you for this gift. Yeah, no <laughs> that was such a good idea. 
I love this man right here. Uh, that's going to be a good time. Now the trick is going to be doing it in such a way that you don't see it coming. <laughs> All right. So anybody else? Good luck. Nothing gets by me. <laughs> Uh, so instead of a van chase, <laughs> yeah. uh, this time I wanted to, uh, I feel like Joe kind of sees herself as a, as a hero or a hero type figure and, uh, she would want to rescue someone, right? Okay. Just, yeah. Save someone from something. Okay. Yep. Whether they liked it or not. Yep. Okay. Uh, and, uh, yep. <laughs> such a mom. It's like, no, I wanted to die. <laughs> like, for, for self-preservation reasons, I kind of wanted to know what was happening on the island before it was okay for vampires to come here. Like, why wasn't it okay mm -hmm. for vampires to, to be here? Okay. I mean, but, like, just get a hint of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little, little Susan. Yeah. Yeah. Of, yeah. Okay. A little yeah. Susan of Metaplot. It's, it is a mystery. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's I a like, compelling I like mystery. mystery. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. I, we can handle that. Little Susan. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Anything for you? Um, Up to and including, like, I would like the opportunity to socially destroy somebody. Like, wreck their life. Power fantasies are totally fine. We can 110% find a way to work that in where it's not going to make anybody feel less than. Mm. Or, again... You cannot ruin this game. It is our game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, if the story that we all decide to tell is, hey, we burned Vancouver, or we burned Victoria <laughs> to the ground. Oh, let's burn Vancouver down. <laughs> yeah. Up to and include, you can be like, hey, we want to go on a trip to Vancouver. We want to see what's up with that. I'm just, this is, oh, but you could, you could, genie's out of the bottle. Make your wishes. Mm. I don't think so. Hmm. No, I. No, that's totally cool. It's totally fine. I like building on other people's things more than yeah doing my own. Okay, yeah, and that is perfectly acceptable. There is nothing wrong with uh, doing support. Uh, so one, I've got all that. Anybody have any questions before I go into the last thing? No, no. no. Okay, so we're gonna just do the two. Uh, uh. Oh, I'm sorry. There's two things. One, uh, let's just review the dumb luck roll, uh, mm -hmm. which is one of my house rules. Uh, dumb luck. At the, uh, uh, at the last game, I asked you to roll 1d10 to get between 1 and 5 of a dumb luck stat. Uh, that is sometimes a roll I'm going to call for when you're like, hey, is there something close by? Is there an X? You know, it's, mm. it's is there a this thing here? Or do I find someone that does this? Anytime you ask me a question like that, uh, I may say, yes, there is, and describe it. Or I may call for a dumb luck roll. And I have a number of successes you need in my head for that thing to be the case. Uh, and then the more good you do, the better it is, the luckier you are. It is just your character's luck stat, and it is rolled by luck. Um, what are all your dumb luck stats right now? Three. Three? Five. Five? Five. Five? Five? Uh, yours, it should be on your second sheet, or at least that's where I put mine. Very good. Don't know? No, That's cool. Roll 1d10. Okay. Why Let's get it right now. Uh, That's wild. Five? Five? Yeah. So one is one, yeah. two and three is two, three and four is three. Yeah, five and six is, wait. Isn't no. it just one divide One is one, in half? two, three. Yeah. yeah, it's just divide in half. Yeah, It'd there you go. Three. Just divide in half. What's that? Three, right? Three? Yeah, three. that'd be three. Okay. Yep, good. So... Do you think that we should roll all your dumb luck stats again in between the series? Sure. Yeah, actually. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm leaving okay. this up to you. You can keep it if you want. No, I think luck is something that varies. Yeah. Yeah, there you all right. Go. All right. Let's see what the stars... Let's see what the stars give you. Ah, seven. I rolled a five, so... I rolled a two. Rolled a two. Okay. That is one. All right. From and five to one. Three. Yeah. yeah, five to one. <laughs> seven. Seven. Perfect. That's why I wanted to ask the table. I was like, I think it's a good idea. Seven is uh, four. Uh, four. Four. Okay. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, seven yeah. is four. Yeah, seven is four. Yeah. Yep. Three. Three. Perfect. There you go. I want. I, I legitimately wanted to ask the table because I haven't done that before. Yeah. Uh, like in between series or chronicles and stuff, it just makes, I think, sense mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> the last thing. 
uh, that I wanted to bring up is uh, one final rule. This isn't a house rule. This is a rule that's in the book that we're going to be using from now on because I would like to spend less time rolling and more time talking with everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be using, and it's found on page 120 in the core rule book. Uh, we're doing automatic wins and taking half. Okay. Okay. So taking half, uh, you do have printed pages for the errata, mm -hmm. uh, which are those three pages I handed you in the stack of papers I gave you at the beginning. Right. Um, so automatic wins are if your dice pool equals the difficulty, you do it. Okay. Okay. Now, if you want to oh. just roll it better, <coughs> bless you. Sorry. Uh, if you want to roll it better. Mm-hmm then you can take the risk and roll the dice. But it's also right. a way to avoid hunger checks and things like that and just kind of help streamline things. Yeah, because... Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. It says twice the test. Oh, I'm sorry, difficulty. excuse me, that's right. right. Yeah, that's because right. It's, it's an average, so... Yep. Because otherwise vampires won't do anything. Thing? Yeah. I, you would avoid... I want to avoid tasks where I could possibly fail critically. <laughs> right. Yeah, right? so I'm sorry. So, yeah, like... I really like automatic wins. Yeah. If your dice pool is twice the difficulty, it is uh, an automatic. Okay. You just automatic right. win. You just do it. You just do the mm -hmm. thing. Because that's also like, you want to drive a car and you've got drive four and dex three, for example, and that's your dice pool. You can do most everything automatically. And, mm -hmm. you know, also you want to avoid, not want to avoid, but some, you know, more uh, rules lurry power gamey types might want to not have to roll anything because they want to avoid anything coming up on the hunger dice mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, taking half is in the errata. Thank you very much for the correction, Cameron, by the way. Um, taking half is in the errata. Uh, looks like a dis. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is from the free uh, V5 companion available on the World of Darkness website. You can have it for yourself for free. Uh, so you're encouraged to let players take half counting half the dice pool as regular successes rather than roll in cases where the player wants to ensure a win on an easy test or doesn't want to risk hunger complications. To keep things interesting, storytellers should keep the exact difficulties of tests secret through descriptive hints such as this seems really beneath you or you're not sure you can crack this without serious effort. Okay. So you can be like, hey, I'd like to take half on this. And I'll be like, all right. Seems like you could probably pull this off without much, you mm -hmm. know, much effort. Or, it seems like it's going to be really hard for you. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to start introducing things uh, such as succeeding at a cost. Mm -hmm. Which is, if I give you a difficulty and you make a dice roll and you're like, two, one or two successes off, I will give you a, uh, 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 a devil's bargain of you can mm -hmm. do X. Okay. If you do this. Okay. Sorry. I just saw on my list. Uh, I have another little bullet point here. One last, last thing. How do y'all feel about uh, in in that devil, those devil's bargains succeeding at a cost? Uh, if I say like, like, let's say you want to make a really important role mm -hmm. and you're like one success short. Mm -hmm. And you're like, but I really want this to happen. One of the things that I may offer, like succeeded to cost, like you do it except the door handle breaks or like, you know, you won't be able to use the car after okay. this roll for a while. That's things like that. That's normally how it is. But something that I like to do uh, because I am a monster uh, is I'll be like, I will absolutely let you do this. But Heather gets one best real failure she gets to use on you and has to do it before the end of the game. So how are you yeah. with me putting that kind of power in another player's control that they get to do? Again, we've all agreed not to be edgelords. Mm -hmm. It's in the service of the story. Mm -hmm. And and that is just to add a little bit of uh, spice to the game. And I understand Chad is probably going to be freaking out at this point going like, do it, do it. But I don't care. I want to make sure yeah, that you're all I'm, good. I'm real on board to have that happen to me. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. It's a real monkey paw situation. Yeah. Yep. Doing it to somebody else, I would just be like... How do I? But they might not always be best real failures. Sometimes they might be just messy crits, like mm -hmm. free messy crits that you can trigger on someone. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh, so I would, like, in that example, I would get the option of saying when he would get the best Correct. Yes. Too. Absolutely. Mm. I'm not putting the penalty on you. Yeah. Penalty's always on the person that's doing the cost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it would be like, hey, Heather, 
I, or I, I would say, uh, sorry, uh, if you needed to succeed at a cost, I'd be like, mm-hmm. hey, Cameron, I want to give Heather one messy critical that she gets to use on you before the end of the game. So you would have it, and you get to use it on Cameron mm-hmm. on any roll mm-hmm. or any time that there's a difficulty, even if he's taking half. And you could be like, that's a messy crit, or that's mm-hmm. a bestial failure. Mm-hmm. How do you all feel about that? I don't think the players would use it. But that's just me because like we don't like to punish the other players. Mm-hmm. Well, it, well, it would be m- mandatory from what I'm understanding. Uh, it would be, yes. You'd have to use it before the end of the game. That's why I put that yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like it might be something complicated to keep track of. Like if you have a thing that you have to get done before the end of the game. Mm-hmm. I would take the responsibility to uh, remind someone. Mm. Be like, okay. keep in mind. Like, let's say you were going to make another roll later. And be like, hey, I'm going to make that roll. And just be like, keep in mind. Hmm. You've got that one. Would you like to use it here? I'd be keen to try it out. Okay. Yeah, I'll try it out and see how yeah. it feels. Because that's mm-hmm. not, like, seriously, that's it's supposed to be mischievous fun, mm-hmm. not to punish your fellow players. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's the spirit in, in which this, we have all agreed, again, no edgelords here. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if we wear many hats, uh, none of them are fedoras. There you go. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, I think, I, I think that sounds interesting um but let's try it on and yeah. see how it feels cool perfect excellent and i don't even know if it's going to come up but yeah we'll try it on we'll see how it feels it's something i do in my home game uh uh and uh it seems to be enjoyed in the spirit again of <laughs> yeah uh because they a lot of my home players are uh chaos goblins and uh really drive their characters like they stole them mm-hmm. right uh, right right so that sounds fantastic sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh something else yeah anyway uh any last questions before we close up and kind of get in on things no no, no. I don't think so. oh, beautiful well i think uh are y'all gonna wear those shirts every day no no, no i right. wash clothes I like variety. Mm-hmm. Fair. Uh, awesome. I'm very excited to be nerds uh, together with everybody. Very much. Very, very much. Uh, good. So uh, just a couple of last shout outs. Um, and I'll do this again. Uh, hopefully I remember at the beginning of session one. Uh, a couple of shout outs to um, uh, Ian Muller for helping to put together some of the information. Uh, that you have in front of you uh, and Meredith Gerber for putting that together. Uh, Thank you very, very much for your help. You're both fantastic, uh, lovely people and the help is incredibly appreciated to help make this game as good as it can be. Um, Great. Beautiful. All right. Well then, this has been Not A Drop To Drink, Session Zero. Get ready for Series 2, (laughs) y'all. It's going to be just based on even the stuff, not even things that I had in mind, but based on the stuff here, uh, it's going to be a wild ride. Uh, thank you for your support. Uh, shows like this are brought to you by viewers like you. Supporting the Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run is uh, one of the best things that you can do to help support this. Uh, this episode will be available wherever you get your podcasts and also on uh, youtube.com slash loading ready run. Thank you so much. We're very excited uh, to be, I'm not even going to say horrible people, just people, vampires, kindred. Welcome to the night. Welcome back to the night. See you later. Are we doing that?